Hello everyone! Today I will try to show you how to make a track for SuperTux card which would probably have quite uh, decent quality even though it will be simple but I will show how to install tools how to make something simple in Blender and uh, how to do stuff specifically for SuperTux card. Well, if you want to find out some information about the game, you can always go to its main page, which is https supertuxcout.net. You can see on the main page some blog posts about releases but what we really need and uh, what you will ever need for making tags is get involved section where there are many links uh, first of all we will be interested in installing tools here and uh, secondly we will try to make tags this tutorial is about tags, not cards, because, uh, well, first of all, I'm not really aware how to make cards well. And, and uh, I have much more experience in, in tags and uh, arenas and uh, soccer fields. I will cover mainly tags here, but soccer fields and uh, battle arenas can be made in a similar fashion, just with some technical differences which you can also find here in the tutorial. Obviously, uh, most of uh, the things I will talk about are contained on, uh, contained on one of these pages, but probably not all. And sometimes they are a bit difficult to understand, that's why I'm making this tutorial. Yeah, and we need to install tools, because, like, uh, we need some tools to make text, and usually we will make tags with a program called Blender. Well, if you go to the page installing tools, there are many links f like GIMP, Krita, Inkscape, uh, which you will probably need. But uh, first of all, you need Blender because unlike SuperTax game, the 2D platformer. Uh, SDK needs 3D objects and uh, we need a 3D editor which is Blender. We can open Blender.org Well, and when we go to Blender.org as the link points us out to it will advertise as the uh, uh, the, the version for zero of Blender, which is the latest one, but the problem is we cannot use it because uh, uh, when we make something in Blender, we get some 3D models with some properties, with with some materials and stuff. But uh, uh, how do we even export it to the game? Because the game doesn't use Blender inside; the game uses its own engine and uh, we need exporters and exporters can work uh, if someone writes the code for them and the code is unfortunately written only for a few versions of Blender which is 2.79 which is mentioned here and probably a few earlier versions uh, all versions between 2.80 and 2.93 which are before 3.0 and also some versions like 3.1 or 3.2 I'm not really sure I guess f for some purposes versions 3.3 and 3.4 of Blender are also okay and uh, exporters work but I'm not exactly sure, I'm not an expert in that I will show you how to do it for the version 2.93 which is not mentioned here but it's the, the, the latest version before 3.0 
the uh, the reason why there are separate gui guides for 279 and 280 is that because Blender has changed pretty much between those two versions. They are not really compatible, I guess. I used 279 before, now I use 293. Even though, yeah, the latest is for zero, which is kinda not making sense. Uh, for SDK because it, it it requires very old Blender, but I guess it is what it is. Maybe maybe someone will write uh, uh, SDK tools for Blender for zero, and then whoever uses it can contribute too. Yeah, so we need to install not Blender for zero, but Blender of some old version. Let's click download. It uh, offers us to download Blender for zero, but we need an older version. Uh, probably previous versions. I will install uh, a standalone version, because I already have all, uh, two versions of Blender, uh, and uh, I don't want to delete them, and, and so I want to install another one. Embrace the past. Your, your old files are safe. Well, it offers to download some weird versions, but we need to click Download any Blender. And here we have many, many folders. I will choose 293. This one. And there are... There is some FTP service. Oh, I'm not even sure what to download. I guess I downloaded one of them back then. I guess I will try to download the latest one. Uh, I will show it all for Linux, Ubuntu. Uh, but it w shouldn't be really much harder for Windows and Mac. Obviously there are some specific moments. But... <laughs> I guess Blender is a good enough software uh, uh, to handle most of things. Well, so I need to take this. I need to download it somewhere. Let's do everything in a specific folder, making text. Well, it will download somewhere. What else we need? We need Blender and we need to install SuperTalks card Blender scripts. For Blender 280 and later, we need to go to the link, which is a repository for Blender scripts. But, uh, those scripts are written in Python, because Blender also uses Python internally. We can find this here a repo. Yeah, I, as I already said, 279 has a completely different thing, and uh, the scripts for it are hosted by SourceForge. I will ju open just so you can see. Yes, and there are some Python scripts. But I guess... Uh, the developers and artists of the game decided that it's better to host it on GitHub. That's why we have it. Yeah, if you use the version before 3.0, it's not enough to just go here and download it. Uh, download the scripts. They are in these folders, but you usually download it like this. You can just uh, uh, download the zip, you or you can just use git clone. If you are familiar with Git clients for like terminal commands for Linux or Git clients for Windows, I'm sorry, I don't really know how Git clients for Windows work, so uh, you can figure out by it by itself, by yourself. But uh, I guess you can just download zip because there are like Python scripts. Just to show you what's inside the folder, uh, Python, 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 Python files. I will just copy this link and clone it uh, in the folder. Git clone. And pa paste the link. 
Yes, I cloned the repo and uh, I can just enter the folder. I mean, I can enter the folder also here. And uh, see that there are the same scripts. But the problem with that is this whole repo works not only for version 2.8 and 2.9, 2.93 of Blender, but also for version 3.0. Uh, if you read the text below, which is readme.md, you can see that minimum requirements now are bl uh, Blender 3.0 or later. If you used Blender 3.0 or later, it's fine. But if you use an earlier version of Blender, between 2.80 and 2.93, because 2.79 uh, doesn't need this repo at all, it needs something else. You need to click this link, and apparently it leads to another branch. Or rather, it leads to a specific commit. Which is 183e7bb. Yes, but uh, unfortunately, it doesn't want us to clone exactly from this point. I will just check and find this commit. Yes. Apparently, the last moment when this repo was suitable for 2.93, which I will show, is uh, was in August of 2022, I guess. So, I, uh, you can just, again, you can just download the zip from this page. I will just do it with git, I will just uh, reset the repo to certain version, which is to, to a certain commit, 183e7bb. Well, and it shows that the latest uh, change is remove unused preferences, which is what I need. And you can see that the files are, well, the folders look the same, but it's probably a bit different. Because after that point, as you can see here on the graph of changes, after that point there, are, there were other changes that are only suitable for 3.0. It's... Uh, you, can, you could just skip this part if you are using 3.0 later, but uh, you just need to know that you'd, if you just uh, click the link here and install it for 2.93 or something, it j will just not work. I know people who were stuck because of that. So just make sure that the version is fine. Yeah, what else do we need? Uh, we downloaded this. I guess Blender is, al is also downloaded. I need to extract it. It will do it soon, I guess. Well, anyway, we will need to place those uh, scripts somewhere in the folder. Yes, and uh, as we are using the standalone version of Blender, we need to use this paragraph, which says uh, that when the Blender is, un is extracted from the folder, which it is already, we need to put all those scripts in the folder uh, Blender version scripts addons. Okay. 293 scripts addons. Like here. So I need to put the whole folder. There are many scripts already here, because Blender has, already has many add-ons by itself. I guess I need to 
move these folders and it makes perfect sense to make it because many other addons start with IO probably extras probably I need to paste extras too let's just do it readme md is clearly a readme file for the repository license is license uh, I will just copy those here okay so I installed the scripts I can run the blend blender now well basically it's this well we have blender 293 it remembers my previous files because apparently uh, the file where they are stored uh, is apparently shared but this is a standalone version anyway I need to enable addons for that we need to go well it's uh, written pretty clearly in this uh, official wiki but sometimes it's not the case so uh, mo most of time it will be clear if you do it yourself but uh, I'm here to clarify some moments if, if needed well and then uh, after placing the scripts in the folder you need to activate them for blender 280 and later you need to go to preferences edit preferences addons which I will do now addons uh, I will search super to scart for some reason the search is really slow you need to tick this checkbox apparently it's still trying to type I'm not sure why <laughs> the search in Blender is kind of buggy the search shouldn't work like that like it's already one item and uh, it still keep it still keeps searching something I can't even do anything right now well you, you need to basically tick the mark here keep the checkbox but it's already ticked you can do it like that and vice PM2 unfortunately the searches in Blender it's still doing something strange you can disable or enable addons like that like if you disable uh, addons that allow uh, exporting in, into the game it's nothing bad you can still uh, use blender you will just be unable to export uh, to export the track or the card whatever you are doing just there will be less menus, less functionalities. All right, we install something. And basically, well, this part is about 279. You also need to have a subversion client. Why? Because, uh, well, you might need some files from the official SDK media repo which includes generic uh, uh, some sets of generic textures uh, everything that that is used for creation of standard tracks and you may you might just need that uh, at some point I don't really recommend uh, that your track is heavily dependent on the files from there because as you know any repository can change and for example if you use uh, textures from Fort Magma or Snow Peak uh, those tracks will be most likely replaced for version 2.0 of the game which is expected to happen in a few years I guess 
then uh, if you don't copy it from there which is better but it's better to not copy but just refer to the, f the file in the media repo it could just happen that uh, you are referring to nothing if something is deleted from the repo but uh, for a simple track it's fine well you need a subversion client Subversion client is uh, well. It is a version control system for s such uh, kind of repositories as SDK Media Repo. You need to install it from here. If you don't have it, you can also install it in Linux with the command line. To be honest, I forgot how to do it. But usually, you can just. Uh, the command to run uh, when you installed it is SVN. Probably uh, it's installed with subversion, right? Well, yes, it's install installed with subversion. So you, you can just run sudo apt install subversion and you will have it. If you use Windows or other operating system, it might be different. You might need uh, some uh, graphical user interface clients. But I guess there are some tutorials how to do it. What you need to do later is to clone the repo. There should be the link for the media repo, but it's not here. We need to go back and find where the link for media repo is located. Probably if in making tags. We need this link. I'm just not sure why it's not here, but okay. We need to open the page media repo and uh, find how c we can clone it. Well, basically it says the same thing, that it stores the source files for text and library nodes and stuff. If you have installed Subversion, you need to do this command if you have uh, if you want to have a terminal command in Linux. Otherwise, well, you can just uh, use this link for your subversion client. Let's just uh, create uh, the media repo from scratch. Obviously, I have it on my PC, but uh, let, let's just show how to do it. It will take some time, so meanwhile, I will do something else. What else we should do? I will just... Uh, I will show how to do <laughs> everything if you have... if you compile the code yourself. Because, uh, well, if, uh, if you use Blender and then you use SDK Blender export scripts, uh, your track is being placed into some folder and it's probably needed to be tested. <laughs> Obviously you can place some folder in the folder with the don'ts or the, in the folder with official tracks but <laughs> considering that uh, the don't folder is quite hidden sometimes uh, with some, it, it can be inside some system folders like app data for Windows uh, and uh, folder starting with dots for Linux and uh, it's it it can be quite complicated to open with standard file browsers. I will just clone the SDK code completely from scratch and show how it looks like. 
So, in addition to the tutorial of making tra of how to make tracks and how to install the tools, I will also download the code. That is kind of another story, uh, because uh, <laughs> most of time when you need to clone the code with Git, uh, you need it for some custom code changes, which you cannot usually get when you don't recompile yourself. But that may, might be actually useful for you if you try the 2.0 version, which is currently in development, by the way. Well, for that, we can still go uh, to the same uh, user, or rather, same company, SuperTextCard, and we can uh, click on the SDK code rep repository. And this is actually the SDK code. You can clone it again by downloading the zip if you don't have the git client. By, but if you want, want to have something advanced, I advise you to have the git client. You can, uh, I mean, downloading the zip file with uh, the whole set of code files with the whole repo, every time it's changed, is it's, it's not a good practice. It's probably better to change only files that are changed, and uh, Git is exactly the version control system that does it. So I will just oh, actually, I did the wrong thing. I started. I accidentally started. Uh, uh, cloning SDK media repo inside uh, the Blender scripts folder, but I will move it by later. So basically I will just git clone the link for official SDK code. You can also call the folder something, like uh, my first attempt to git clone SDK code. Obviously I will not do it, but I mean it could be useful if you clone the same repo several times, or if you clone uh, the repo with the same name, like the, for example the repo and its fork, which have the same name, but you have to distinguish the folders. The code is relatively fast to download, compared to media repo, which will take some time. Also, <laughs> if you look at uh, installation f re recommendations for SDK code, it says you, al you also need SDK assets. So basically, today I'm cloning the SDK code with this command. SDK assets with this line, and also SDK media repo. The difference between SDK assets and SDK media repo is that, well, assets are the are the files which are needed for running SDK unconditionally. You need them, and that's all. They don't include include source files. Source files are put in media repo. For example, SDK assets have uh, the have the official cards and tracks, but only in the exported version, like uh, they're ready to use. And SDK Media Repo has uh, the sources, all the uh, vector files for the textures, for some textures, if they were needed to produce them, uh, some raw files, let's say. And uh, if you don't d download SDK from GitHub, like uh, if you don't compile the code, you uh, still have SDK assets, but they are already bundled into your installation most of time. For some Android devices it's not true, but uh, uh, something is, is still inside already, and uh, for them the rest of things are downloaded separately. So I will also run this command from the same folder. As you see, it also needs a version. It will 
again take some time all together okay actually also apart from downloading code and uh, downloading assets you need some libraries which you can install for different types of Linux but I already have them I won't spend time running this command you can just copy it and uh, if you use Windows there is a whole big section for Windows to build super text on Windows for these instructions download Visual Studio and stuff and there is also a section for Mac Meanwhile, while everything is downloading, let's switch back to Blender. Yeah, I will meanwhile install a script for Blender which uh, allows me to show the keys I press. It's called the screencast keys, you can find it on GitHub. This is the latest version as of now, but considering it was released yesterday, probably uh, at the time of your watch, uh, at the time of your, of your watching, the latest version may already be 3.14 or even more than Pi. You can just download it. Let's download it in the same folder. And then you need to install it by, well, well, very simply, you just open Blender Preferences, you need to clean the leggy search, <laughs> you need to find screencast keys and enable it. It's probably not activated right now. I will restart Blender for that. Well, for some reason it isn't. Maybe enable on startup does something for that. Yes, you can see this thing. I mean, <laughs> this thing this will just show what I'm pressing. It's obviously installing this script is not needed uh, to make the track. I'm just uh, showing it in case you wanted to showcase your Blender experience, ex experience already. So basically, uh, while it is installing, I hope it does it soon. The first thing you need to do about Blender is understand it how it works. It may be really confusing. I'm not sure about uh, other 3D editors like or systems like Maya and stuff. I have never used them. I have no idea how they work either. But uh, <laughs> Well, maybe they are easier to understand. But uh, really, if you try Blender for the first time, especially if you try it without having mouse, or and uh, use on the keyboard or key keyboard with touchpad, it might be slightly uncomfortable and not understandable what happens here. Let's just do something. I. Uh, you can change the layout of Blender pretty much, you can change the uh, skin, like you can change it to light, you can change it to white, oh my eyes, you can change it back to dark, I will use dark because I use it most of the time. I, I'm not sure what my uh, theme means, probably it's having background like mine. 
I'm not sure how it looks anyway. <laughs> you can basically customize everything, I guess. If you need. You can also uh, change the width height of things. Uh, hide something if you don't need it. Show something if you need it. It's very cool. Actually, very strange that it doesn't uh, capture my mouse wheel. Like, uh, it also provides some presets for layout. Like, it can make some windows, uh, some parts of window bigger or not. Those are probably useful, but I never use them, so I don't know. <laughs> Anyway, uh, you can just uh, use the default layout of Blender and uh, then uh, uh, while you're gaining experience you can try some other modes. Yeah, so basically what you need to, to know about Blender. First of all, there is a default cube. I will recreate it from scratch. This is the scene you have when you start Blender. There is a default cube selected with orange right now. There is a sun, there is a camera. You do not need cameras and, and uh, sometimes you don't need sun in SDK. And you don't need the default cube either unless you want to create something from it. So we need to just delete them. How to do everything of that? Well, you need to know that uh, by default... I'm actually not sure. Probably they switch, uh, they, they changed, they swapped the left and right mouse buttons. It's probably asking you in the settings when you started for the very, 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 very first time. But you can select objects with right mouse button. Like, now I selected the cube, now I selected the camera, and now I selected the sun. Uh, you can select all objects with A. You can deselect all objects with uh, pressing A two times, or with Alt A. Like, I selected them now, and I deselected them right now with Alt A. It is different from 279, where you need to where probably Alt A doesn't work. I don't really remember, but I think it's like that. Meanwhile, it's still installing. Well, the code is cloned. That's why uh, I already cal can compile it. STK media rip and STK assets are still in progress. But probably it, uh, the code requires assets to compile. Anyway, to, to compile it, we need the following thing. We need to make... Uh, we need to go into the code folder, which is uh, SDK code. We need to make a build folder. You can do it in your file manager too. I'll call it build, because... Uh, well... Usually it's called CMake build, but uh, then it's not convenient to type it because there is a CMake folder. If I create, if I name it build, I can just type B and use tab. <laughs> and then I need to run a few comments. The first comment is CMake uh, with some options. They are obviously listed in the code. Not in the code, but in the repo. It says that we need to make, create a build folder, we need to see make, and we need to make. The reason I, I'm writing those options is that uh, if you read the guide carefully, it says that you need to pass Dino shader C on to disable shader C, which is only needed for Vulkan, and uh, uh, its compilation might be uh, the easier part, but where to put it, uh, it's a bit confusing, for me at least. <laughs> I if you can tell me where exactly to put it, I would be grateful. 
So I will pass this option and I will also pass uh, the variable that means that CMake build type is release. Just in case, it should be STK release by default. So I invoked CMake and it configured the code project so that uh, it's ready to be built for it's ready to be built uh, with release type release build type and uh, now I can make uh, I can run make you can just run make without arguments but uh, you can increase your number of cores used for that let's say it's 8 it will take some time it will print something some warnings some messages like I have built a file. Meanwhile, there's still the loading. Yeah, I've, I was talking before about uh, the bl bl Blender, how to do everything. You can select objects with A, deselect with Alt A, probably. X, X is the key to delete everything. Sometimes, uh, like in this part of window, it will ask uh, for additional confirmation. In this part, for example, it won't. If I uh, press X here, it will just delete it. Basically, you need to know uh, some basic, basic keys. I will, uh, meanwhile, change some lay layout of blend so that I'm more convenient. You can click on things, you can click on menus, you can cha uh, change the placement, like I will press flip to bottom and flip and flip this to bottom too. Because it's more convenient for me like that. Basically you need to know some keys. A is for selecting all. Mm, X is for deleting. Uh, if you have an object, you can move it. You can use G to move it anywhere. It's understandable that uh, if the, uh, the Blender is a 3D editor and so I if you move it along 2D screen, it won't cover all movements. Uh, but I guess it, it moves along side... Uh, it moves... Uh, parallel to the uh, to the area visible by the screen parallel to uh, screen angle, let's say screen plane you can also adjust camera to uh, to make it move in some specific plane cameras are adjusted uh, either by rotating the view something like you can press the middle button of mouse and rotate it. But that's like arbitrary rotation. It it can be used uh, so that so that you you can see the object from different sides. It can be useful. Also, you can press uh, numpad buttons if you have them. I guess it's advised to have them, <laughs> or at least use a keyboard then uh, that uh, supports them. I'm not sure how to do it without numpad. Probably the right key binnings, binnings again, but numpad is just uh, default. If you press numpad 7, it's the top view. I pressed multiple times, but you don't need it. You can just press it once. Uh, you, if you press 1, you view it from the front. Front is here not for objects, front however you rotate uh, it. it. It's just... Uh, it, it's just the, the direction of y-axis. You can press 3 to view it from the direction of x-axis. Top view is uh, correspondingly... Uh, corresponds to z-axis. You can use 4, 6, 2 and 8 to rotate somehow. It usually rotates by 15 degrees, so like if you press it six times, it will make half a circle. 
no, I was wrong. <laughs> uh, I mean, 15 degrees times 6 is 90 degrees, so it will make a full circle uh, 24 paces. Also, you can rotate it like that. Obviously, it doesn't have to be al along some axis, it rotates the view. Uh, what else you can do? You can notice that uh, when you press the top view, there is top orthographic. When you press the numpad 1, it's front orthographic. When you press the 3 in numpad keyboard, uh, it says right orthographic. It, uh, if you try to rotate it, it says user perspective. User obviously corresponds to the fact that it's a custom rotation. Uh, but what is perspective? Well, there are uh, several kinds of uh, projections. Ob obviously, uh, your screen is 3D, is not 3D, but 2D. And the objects you want to edit are 3D. So they're uh, in, uh, projected in some way. There are orthographic projection and uh, perspective projection. You can see that they are slightly different. This is orthographic, this is perspective. Perspective projection is how you see it in reality, let's say. Orthographic projection uh, is slightly different, but it can be used to preserve... Uh, I don't exactly remember, probably lengths, because you can see that in perspective projection, which I switched to using the numpad, numpad 5, you can switch between perspective and orthographic projections using 5. In perspective projection, which is here, uh, you can see that the edges have different length, uh, different, le different lengths, I guess. Mm. And in orthographic projection, they are equal. I think. It looks a bit unnatural, but also, uh, it doesn't dis distort some angles, so it might be useful. 7, 1 and 3 are uh, toggling on the orthographic projection. And if you rotate, it becomes perspective, but I mean, you can press 5 and then it rotates the orthographic projection instead. Well, apparently there is also 9. The button 9 apparently just toggles projection to the uh, completely opposite one. Like if you were looking in one direction, you, you are now looking at the object in the opposite direction after you press 9. But you also can use Shift 7, Shift uh, 1, and Shift 3 to get the opposite uh, projections from top, front, and uh, and right projections, right views. So basically, you can rotate camera like that as you want. You can also do something like do something different. You can press Shift tilde, and then you are entering the flying mode. You can use some keys which are listed below, actually. You can move closer forward, to the left, to the right, whatever you want. You can even jump at some point, but that's a bit advanced. You probably don't need it for now. Just... Uh, uh, it is really similar to what SDK has in artist debug mode, as flying, as... Uh, as Ctrl F2 mode. That is almost the same thing, except in this case it works a bit differently. But you can use it to slightly change the angle, for example, or to to get into some areas which are not visible from outside. Well, that is how to rotate objects, and also... Well, as I said, cam uh, camera is sometimes needed to move the object in a certain way. For example, if we use the top view and then use G button, G is for movement. 
you can treat it as g as go. So the, the cube goes somewhere, you can see that dz is 0, which means that it goes uh, in the direction of z that axis by 0, which means it's uh, moving only along side x or along side y, which is good. That's why top view is actually useful and important. Well, and because top view is generally very nice. Uh, front view and right view also have this property, obviously. If we use right view uh, while moving the object, x won't change. But actually, you don't you don't have to move the camera uh, to move the object uh, in a certain way. When using the movement button, which is G, you can uh, uh, pre you can move it anywhere. But if you additionally press X while moving, it will move on the along side. You, it will move only along X axis. You can uh, press Y instead, and it will move only along Y axis or Z. It will move on Z axis. Yeah, basically the, the type of movement caused by G is uh, an operation that needs confirmation. You can move it anywhere, but to finish it, you just you need to press either Enter or left mouse button. And if you press right mouse button, it's cancelled. Like I move, will move it somewhere, and now I will press right mouse button, and it will return to the original place. And if I move it and uh, then press the left mouse button, it will stay there. Very nice. And also you can actually specify by which amount you need to move something. Obviously it uh, it is working better if you specify the axis. Let's do it again. Uh, oops. If you want to move the cube b along x axis, you can type the number actually. Let me ty type it. For example, I want to move it along by 3.14 meters. I will just type the numbers. You can do it on numpad too. If you move the mouse, it does. It seems to, to do nothing. But you still have to confirm it with left mouse button to move it. Otherwise, well, you, if you press right mouse button, it's cancelled. Uh, why that? Because uh, you can type some number, but then, uh, okay, if you move the mouse, nothing happens, but you can actually press backspace. You can look uh, here and see the exact number. You can type the number differently later, like I wanted uh, 1.5, but I type just 5. Now it moved by another uh, amount of meters, number of meters. And also you can press minus to change the sign. Like now it went to the right, now it went to the left, and so on. You can also, for example, I wanted to type something but I didn't type the number. You can also move it by fraction of something, of some number. Like for example you want to move it by uh, one third of a meter, you could just type zero point three 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 three, but why? You don't need to do that. You can erase the whole number and type three and press slash slash uh, uh, just as a minus toggles the mode of uh, inverting the number, but uh, the minus but minus is uh, toggling the sign of the number f and the slash toggles whether the number is at I is is as is or if one is divided by it. Like now it's moved by three meters. Now it's moved by one point uh, by thirty three centimeters and something. <laughs> yes. Also, if you are familiar with that, you can practice actually. Uh, then you can uh, note that there are other such buttons. For example, you can use S, and S does the same as G, but it instead of uh, making the object go somewhere, it scales it. S is for scale. 
you can see that the cube is now much bigger. <laughs> it, it shows the numbers by how much. Similarly, you can use Sx and it, it will scale by x. Similarly, you can use obviously y and z. You can type numbers. You can shrink it by 5 time, uh, along uh, that axis. By the way, uh, you can see that after we scaled it, the camera is still rotating along some point, along zero, let's say. That is because uh, it was located at the origin, like at zero, zero, zero. We can pr uh, press the numpad period button, point, I guess, dot, <laughs> and uh, then uh, the whole rotation and all the rotation and all the camera movement, camera in the sense of your screen view, will be rotated along the object selected. You can do it for another object or for parts of object. You can also, if you can use G for going somewhere and uh, S for scaling, somehow. You can also use R. Obviously you can rotate it uh, in some strange way. I'm not sure how exactly it's rotated right now. But uh, most of time I use again Rx, Rx I mean. <laughs> you can rotate it uh, with respect to x-axis. You can rotate it around y and around z. Obviously, you can, again, select the, the angle, let it be zero, for example. <laughs> Those are very basic operations. You should get uh, used to them as soon as possible. While uh, right mouse button selects the object, or some o other objects too, you can add them with shift. Now I selected two objects, and uh, move the camera closer to them, so that rotation is on them. With numpad point. Mm, the left mouse button seemingly does nothing. If I click somewhere, it moves something. This small thing is, co is called the uh, 3D cursor. It may, might be needed if you need precise coordinates somewhere, or it can serve just as a pointer. For example, we can manipulate it in some way. Uh, we, we can press Shift S while the, some object is selected. Obviously, escape works like uh, canceling operation. Something. If we select this object, for example, we can select, uh, and there is a uh, 3D cursor somewhere. We can press Shift S, and there are many options. Uh, we can move cursor to selected object, which will make the cursor here, at the origin of this object. Origin is not necessarily the center, but it's uh, a bit uh, diffi uh, difficult to explain uh, right now, especially that we are learning the basic commands. Or we can uh, do the same, but vice versa. We can say selection to cursor, and then uh, the object will move to the exact location of the cursor. So that way, for example, we can set uh, the cursor to one object and uh, move another object to the same place. So now the camera and the deformed cube are in the same place. Obviously, I can move, move it out. The camera is not really needed for us, but I'll just I just keep it because I need another object. Uh, actually, there, uh, y you might think that. <laughs> Okay, we are moving some objects, but what if we w need to do something precisely? Well, no problem. There is button N, which hides and shows a menu, where you can select many things. For example, for this object, if you select it, you can see that uh, the location it's located at minus 14 uh, point something uh, x coordinate, y coordinate, and z coordinate. We can change it manually, like we set it, we can set it to zero, for example. And if we rotate, we can see that it's indeed above the x y axis. We can change it as we want. We can 
lock it apparently and uh, then well apparently lock doesn't work for this <laughs> I don't really use it so I'm sorry for <laughs> trying it in the wrong way <laughs> we can also rotate it you can see that it's not rotated we can rotate it by X you, you can actually press the mouse button and rotate it like that or you can change it you can type something, you can type minus big number, but it doesn't really matter because it is always taken modulo 360. You can also scale it, like if you want to scale it uh, by 2, you don't have to uh, type SX2. You can do it in the same way, you can just type 2, or you can just multiply it by 2. Here it recognizes it. Or you can just add 98 to make it 99. Some kinds of arithmetic expressions are supported. Well, and uh, you can also change dimensions, like if you want it to be 3 meters, obviously it will scale by 1.5 on x axis. That Those are pretty useful if you want to make something precise. Uh, there are different options. Uh, for example, you can select what is affected by movement and stuff. In the view tab you have the 3D cursor menu and uh, the, the you can manipulate its location and rotation in the same way. Basically you can set this to zero and it moved to zero. It's just high. You can rotate it. You can see that something has changed. And basically you can set it to any point. You can set, uh, you can move any object to any point, you can um, select something with cursor, you can mo move object there, and that is kind of how you move simple objects. Let's take a break for a minute and check if everything has done. Well, Media Rep is not downloaded yet, SDK sets are downloaded and the code is compiled. Well, to run the code, we need to do something like bin super tuxcap. But probably not only. Uh, as we are trying to make the tag, we need to. Uh, we might need to edit some config files. Like, uh, for example, we can access config XML file. We need to find where it's located. For Windows, it's located in C users uh, us username app data roaming super tux card uh, and then basically the same folders as in Linux. In Linux, it's, uh, in Ubuntu at least, it's located at uh, config super tux card config 0 0.10. 0 0.10 is actually depends on the version. When it will be version 2, it will be another folder, but I mean, it wouldn't be hard for you to find it later. Config XML. And I will just edit it. I will edit with Nano, but you can edit it with anything. Well, I will scroll it down. Well, at, at the end I see saved GPs, but if you have it, you need to ignore it. Anyway, somewhere at the end of the file, you have artist debug mode option. You need to set it to true. If you don't have it, you will have less functionality. You don't need it for racing. And in fact, if you try to enable some flying options of artist debug in racing, you will just lag more and your camera will do some weird things. But uh, it's very much... Uh, it, it's very useful for... Uh, looking at your track from different angles and not only from the cart.
you might need to unlock everything uh, just in case you don't have it for example if you haven't unlocked this story mode uh, completely and uh, still have some text locked that is probably not a good thing to do especially if you try to develop the text to, to, to make the tech. If you make the tech, you probably should know what's going on in other tracks. <laughs> so you should set it to 2. Mm, yes, and th there is also an option for command line. Uh, every time I will pass some options to SuperTuxCard directly from the terminal. I run it from terminal usually. usually. Uh, you can do it too, but if you are running a sticky node from terminal, but uh, I don't know, maybe on Windows, you can write the options here. I guess they they will be supported. Like you can write op options like check debug. I will tell later uh, how it works. Probably, probably, it it should be set here. I would be glad to fix myself it's if that's not true, not true but uh, if you want to specify an option for the SuperTux card uh, executable to run and uh, you don't have terminal, you can do it here, basically. Well, this is the config file. Uh, for your information also, add-ons are located in a slightly different folder on Linux on Ubuntu. Uh, local share super tux card. Uh, for Windows it's probably still roaming but another folder. I'm not quite sure. And then there are many folders. There is a folder add-ons, Grand Prix, replay and screenshots. Screenshots are only screenshots taken with button in game. I don't remember exactly which button. Replay is for Ghost Replays and add-ons is the folder for add-ons. Let's see what's there. Well, I have too many folders that you probably don't have. But it doesn't really matter. You, ob you should have folder cards and folder text. Cards are for cards and text are for every, everything else. If you want to make uh, your own add-on and you want to test it, you can place it there. Or if someone is giving you an add-on. Well, basically uh, the install add-on command on in server lobbies puts the text there. I hope it downloaded. Well, it didn't really. Well, assets, yes. Assets are done. STK Media Repo is still not done, which is... Uh, which is a shame. But anyway, there are other comments I can talk about. You can... Uh, I already said that you can use the middle but mi mouse button to rotate arbitrarily. Right button is to select, uh, left button is for cursor, or actually you can uh, use it to select some windows. To select everything within it. You can use N to toggle this. Well, and also you need to know that uh, what are these options? These options are basically uh, how the selection behave. This option... I don't really use it, unfortunately. <laughs> well, mm, you should know that, for example, uh, rotation is always relative uh, to something. Like, if uh, the object is going somewhere, it's, it just goes by some amount of meters, some number of meters. If it's scaled, if it, it, just, it is just scaled. But rotation is relative to some point. Uh, if we just try to rotate the object around x-axis, for example, it just rotates uh, around its center. But that can be changed. You can actually rotate it uh, around any point. Uh, you can take the transform pivot point menu, which is here. And there are... Oops. 
there are some options active element medium point uh, median point which is the default one individual origins 3d course and bounding box center well bounding box center and active element I don't really use mm. but they prob I don't know maybe they're useful individual origins are, are used when you have to rotate several objects at once but they should be rotated separate like I will try to rotate the deformed default cube and the camera uh, around y-axis oh well I mean if we, ha we use median point they are rotated together but in this way they are rotated like they are the same object and individual origins means they will be rotated like uh, they never met each other ever <laughs> 3D cursor is another thing. You can specify any point, as I already said, as 3D cursor, and they will rotate around it. Something like that. Sometimes uh, different modes are useful. Default is median point. You should be aware at all times uh, what you are rotating around, <laughs> because okay sometimes it's uh, mostly obvious I if you rotate it around something wrong but uh, if for example you had a 3d cursor near the center of your object and you accidentally rota rotate it around it your points might be slightly in another place from what you expected and that is pretty annoying I should say there is a menu to snap you can snap to increment which mean which means that if you use for example movement it will move the object uh, along uh, every axis uh, on uh, by an integer number of meters note that the overall distance might be not integer because of uh, square root which happens when you try to calculate the distance you can snap to vertex or edge or face or volume but then uh, th there are other menus like if you snap to vertex uh, you can specify what exactly snaps to it it basically means that if I have for example another cube it's not a cube but deformed cube sorry <laughs> for example I will scale it like that I will scale by Z to and if I have the snap to ver vertex uh, and it's set to closest vertex being snapped for example I can use G just then uh, move the mouse to some vertex and the closest vertex of m the moving object will go there like here it can be pretty useful when you try to align the objects it's probably a bit too complicated to start but uh, just for the reference that you have it actually there are many other options you can uh, it it can affect uh, only movement or only rotation or something yeah by the way uh, to make another object you can use shift D and then uh, there is a menu for movement actually that is pretty useful if you want to use, uh, make many equal objects and then rotate them somehow for example by themselves <laughs> very interesting <laughs> there are also several shading modes you can press the Z button for that and uh, well, all those menus you can note that you can select with mouse, but you can also select it with button 2, 4, 8 and 6. It's probably more useful on uh, numpad, because the, uh, the digits are located like that. But it doesn't really matter. There are four modes. 
de the default is solid which has no textures uh, to preview it with textures you can use two well the objects currently have no texture but uh, when they do it will be show uh, there is 8, which I almost never use, because it's probably some ren uh, Blender rendering. And there is 4, which is very much used, because uh, sometimes you need to look through the objects, and uh, then you can see its whole structure. Like, here you can see that there are 12 edges, <laughs> and here you don't see them. Of course, we understand that it is a uh, parallelepiped, but just in case, maybe there is a hole somewhere inside. <laughs> it it might happen. Looking through the objects is nice too. Well, did it finish? No, it didn't. That is far from being everything, of course. There is also an option for proportional editing, but uh, uh, well, in, in short it does the following. If you move something, then uh, things around it also are also moved, and you can tweak the radius in which it affects things. <laughs> well, also, if I delete all objects by all objects but one, for example, There is edit mode, or oh, rather there are many modes, you can click here and see that there are many different modes. The default mode is object mode. Object mode is when the object is visible and it's indivisible, uh, unchangeable and something like that. There are edit mode, sculpt mode, vertex paint, weight paint, uh, texture paint. I don't think I ever use texture paint. Uh, or weight paint. I definitely did something about uh, weights, but not in this mode. I think it will be too advanced for uh, starting from zero. <laughs> vertex paint probably too. Vertex paint is basically uh, just so you know what it is without big explanation. Vertex paint is basically uh, when I, uh, when I can say for some ver vertex that this vertex should be yellow and uh, for th and uh, what it means is that the color of the faces around it uh, around this vertex are slightly more yellow for example I if I tell this vertex that it, it should be yellow, the part of this face, this face, that is closer to this vertex will be yellow or more yellow, something like that. By the way, this tool is called annotations, like, you can actually invoke the movement or rotation or scale from here, from this menu. I'm not sure how much useful it is, I just don't use it. Uh, you can move the cursor, you can select something. Well, usually I use this mode, where you just select. You can also annotate, like you can write anything you want, like literally. It might be useful if you don't if you use if you want to point at something, uh, but you have already used your 3D three D cursor somewhere else, or just to say something to people who watch you on the stream. <laughs> you can uh, tweak it somehow. You can add many th many different colors and stuff. They act as different layers. You can tweak if they are snap to surface or not. It's not really important, uh, I'm just showcasing what you can do. There is also a ruler. You can measure distances and even angles, like that. Well, what else? Mm, yeah, there are many modes. 
most time most of times you will need object mode which is basically when you just look at the object move it somewhere and stuff edit mode is when you edit the object that is very interesting because uh, well most objects can contain uh, most objects consist uh, consist of vertices edges and faces when you join edit mode you can see that there is an additional menu uh, where you can here you can uh, switch to vertices view edges view and faces view you can see that they are be different especially they a bit different in Wi-Fi mode Z4 Uh, in the vertices uh, mode, you can manipulate vertices. In the edges, you can manipulate edges. You can select them, move them. The same is about vertices, by the way. It looks strange, but okay. <laughs> and in face mode, you can manipulate manipulate faces. Like you need to select a face, and then you can move the whole face or rotate it. Like, great job. I just deformed the cube very much. <laughs> and it looks like that. <laughs> okay, I will just cancel it. Obviously, you can uh, use Ctrl Z to cancel and Ctrl Shift Z to uh, do some action again, as the edit menu implies. Well, you can also toggle those modes within edit mode. You need to be also aware whether it's object mode or edit mode or whatever else mode, obviously. You can toggle that with 1, 2, 3. No, not, not the num numpad 1, 2, 3, but with usual 1, 2, 3. You can see that the mode changes. You can manipulate them as objects. Like, you can move the vertices. You can uh, scale the vertices, but I mean, scaling the vertex doesn't really make sense. Just as rotating along, uh, around itself, but if you are rotating around another vertex, like, for example, if I set a 3D cursor here, you can rotate this vertex around uh, I did something wrong. I mean, you can rotate uh, the vertex around 3D cursor, and then for example, around around x axis and this cursor. Well, uh, by specifying the pivot point, we just uh, made a segment to rotate. Not made a segment. We just rotate the segment, not just this point. You can manipulate it as much as you want. There are many useful functions which you can uh, you you can find in the menus for face, edge, vertex and mesh, for example, what you can do is... Uh, let me change the view a bit to solid. What you can do is, for example, you can subdivide the edge. You can find it from this menu, subdivide. Or you can use shortcuts like Ctrl E D. You can actually see that some letters here are un underlined, which means that if you press the corresponding uh, key on the keyboard, like if I press E, it will extrude edges. If I press M, it will mark seam. Yeah. I can press D and then subdivide. Subdivide. So you can see that one edge, one half of edge is white, another is orange. White is the last chosen selected object. It uh, actually may be important which of ob the object is selected last for some operations. But if you switch into vertices view, you can see that there is a vertex here. Now you can move it. Now this is not a quadrilateral, but a uh, five-sided polygon. At the same time well, this you can see that this is a five-sided polygon, actually, and this is two. A 
a good tone is to have most of uh, polygons you have as trees or quads. Trees are triangles and quads are quadrilaterals. That is, they should have either three sides or four sides. Uh, very big polygons are not really good for a few reasons. First of all, you can split uh, the polygon into triangles, always. In many cases, you can split it in many different ways, like any quadrilateral can be split into triangles in two ways. And for example, and th the, po uh, the problem with ha having polygons with big enough uh, number of sides is that, first of all, they can be rendered badly, because graphical engines still split them into, pol into triangles. And secondly, they may might be just not smooth enough. Like, for example, you can move uh, this vertex here, and this vertex here, and this vertex uh, somewhere here, and this vertex somewhere here. What's the point of having this polygon? It's not even flat, but if we split it into triangles, like we can use face and triangulate faces, which is Ctrl-T, as Blender says it, there are tri triangles, which are, first of all, easier to render for graphical engines. Secondly, uh, you can change them a bit more, in a bit more detailed way. You can smooth the vertices somehow. Like Ctrl V O. It's here. Well, actually, Ctrl V is just a shortcut for vertex menu. You can just use it here. Ctrl E is shortcut from for edge menu, and Ctrl F is for face menu. <laughs> so basically, you can just invoke all commands with mouse, but uh, you can just do it with keyboard shortcuts if you are better with them. You can subdivide the edges, you can do many things, like... Uh, you can intersect some faces, but that's probably what I won't do right now. <laughs> you can... triangulate faces, as I already did, you can... do something else. Again, y if you select some vertices, you can delete them. But for deletion of uh, vertices, edges, and faces, there is a separate menu. Like, if you select two vertices... Let me invoke from here. You can delete just vertices, then it will delete everything that is related to them. You can delete edges that will delete, again, everything related to them. Including... Uh, vertices and faces, I guess. You can delete faces. Like, well, I didn't select any faces, <laughs> but uh, uh, but when I select two vertices, it automatically selects an edge. Uh, if I delete edges, it will delete, well, too much probably. <laughs> there are options also to delete only edges and faces. For example, if I select this edge, if I delete edge. Well, it seems to me like the same thing for now, but probably it ha has a difference. If you are too careful like me, you can just use this option or this option. For example, if I try to delete the face here, if I select delete faces... Well, <laughs> I mean, I usually do either delete vertices or delete edges of faces or delete faces. It depends on what you need to do. There is also an option to dissolve vertices, edges of faces. It works like that. Like I subdivided this edge. Let me just delete everything. <laughs> By the way, you can add any object in object mode or any type of shape in edit mode using Shift A. And then you can select something. By the way, in many comments there is a menu here, which you can use to tweak something. Like if I want 20 meters here, okay, it will have 20 meters. 
so like for example I have a plane like that I can delete this vertex but if I delete this vertex like I will have only three vertices and two edges what if I want to remove it but uh, st ha still have some face and connect these two vertices I can use dissolve vertices then those two edges are collapsed into one There is also collapse edge, edges and faces, which is probably kind of the same. Well, apparently if I select this uh, edge and I collapse it, it turns into a vertex. It should be really useful for some purposes, but not always. Well, so like... <laughs> It's already too much information, but SDK Media Repo is still not done. <laughs> Very nice. What you also can do, like, if you accidentally split the face into triangles, like, for example, you triangulated it with Ctrl T, you can Uh, use these two quads to make quadrilaterals out of very similar tri triangles like if there are too many triangles maybe it's better uh, which are pretty flat which maybe it's better to have quadrilaterals you can specify the angle I use 70 you can do many things like <laughs> There are some options like crease, seam, and stuff, which are mostly used for some deformations and texturing. You can do something about vertices. You can smooth them, actually. Like, uh, for... <laughs> well... You can also do something like... It's not here, I guess. You can also use E to extrude the vertices, edges, and faces. Like if you extrude the vertex, you just get a new vertex that is connected to it. If you extrude an edge, you will just get another edge that is connected to it, which also means you have a face. You can modify it later. And if you extrude the face, you can just again when extruding, you can do it on on some axis. By default, it's alongside the normal to the face, but you can change it. You you get another face that is connected to this face, and this face also the previous face is also destroyed somehow. Another useful key is F. If you select two vertices and you press F, it creates an edge. If you connect three or more vertices, it can create a face. For example, we can recreate this face back like this. And obviously, we can just continue <laughs> extruding something somewhere. As you see, it, it can just be used for many purposes, like continuing something. We can do more faces strange and not strange. We can also make it smooth. We can select uh, some set of vertices and smooth them. Smooth Smoothing means they should be closer to their neighbors. We can do it not one time but more. We can select axis for that. You can see that there are way, well, way too many functions to do. <laughs> you don't have to remember all of them. 
you can just return to it when you are ready to do something. For the, for the first time, maybe just creating other vertices, other faces, and uh, other edges, uh, moving them somewhere, creating the duplicates, connecting them, it's probably fine. If you're just modifying the objects. But there are obviously some SDK related things, which I cannot not mention. But unfortunately, SDK Media Repo is still downloading. Even though, like, my internet is not so bad. <laughs> Very strange. Well, anyway. Let's say the file somewhere. Let's go to the folder. And then uh, we can... Well, we need to save the blend file somewhere. There are actually some guides where to save the blender file. Let's... B by the way, let's go just to making text guide. <laughs> Basically it has way too many... things to consider, like there are many articles, notes, notes say that you ha need to have Blender, you need to file have file structure, Th yes, that's pretty important, even though I personally don't really follow it, file structure is important because uh, uh, at some point you might need someone's help, and uh, you might need to pass the blend to someone else so that that someone else can open it. The problem is if you use absolute paths or something like that that is strongly discouraged by this paragraph th this or somewhere later I mean, uh, <laughs> well, you should follow the guidelines anyway, like, you should have standardized file structure, uh, they say your uh, the Blender file should be contained inside the media repo tracks folder, but it's not really necessary I mean, uh, for making the track and opening something else, but I mean, if you follow this guideline, uh, probably it will be easier for someone else to open your files and to help, and for you to help others too. You should ignore all those phases uh, about including the core game, even if you don't expect the track to be included in the core game. Place it. You should place it unconditionally, if you can. For example, I cannot. Well, because I'm lazy and uh, stupid enough to have another folder for all Blender projects. <laughs> but uh, it should not depend on whether you are ambitious or not. And uh, by the way, all those phases about if uh, included in the core game, they should not be deceptive to you. Don't believe in them. Uh, Currently, and for probably for the next uh, 10 or 20 years, okay, not 20, okay, not 20, okay, uh, currently and for the next 5 years or so, I don't think uh, uh, many new people will be accepted into making official text, first of all. Because, well, first of all, uh, all official tracks and uh, cards are changed only when the major, uh, major version is released. The previous major version will, was five years ago, and the next major version will be in a few years. Or maybe it's time to start, by the way, <laughs> if you want to contribute something to it. But the problem is there are already a few tracks being replaced, some of them, uh, for some of them uh, the replacement is done or al almost done, 
there is very high probability they will be accepted and there is a high probability no nothing else will be changed. Obviously, if you manage to master Blender and SDK to the extent uh, uh, you exceed their quality, it would be great. But even th then, I don't think it's guaranteed you uh, will manage to put your track in the game. <laughs> because there are like many other things to consider, like tracks should have different theme and stuff more or less similar style and basically I think uh, th things like included in the core game or official th this, official that uh, it's I think those things like encouraging to be in the list of favorite tracks for developers and artists uh, like encouraging being standard is not what uh, SDK needs to do because it's a free open source game and uh, it should have some level of decentralization and uh, and th there can be unlimited contributors but uh, the, the place in the among the standard text is very limited and uh, it shouldn't discourage anyone from making add-ons especially if they manage to make them better than official text. Well, I was speaking a bit too much <laughs> about that. The problem is, well, uh, they tell us to save the Blender file inside the media repo text folder. Okay. Let's see. The problem is that media repo is... Oh, media repo is just done. The problem is that I cloned it in another folder. I will move it out. Well, now media repo is located in the correct place. It is located here. And so I should save the file to media repo. Not this media repo, it's my, my, my media repo, default one. For the purpose of this video, we'll use the other one, this one. So inside the text folder of media repo is the place where I should save it. I'm not exactly sure because, like, <laughs> well, it should be in a folder located inside the text folder. So, okay, I will create a folder. Let's call it simple track. Okay. Here I will save the plant. Okay. We, will, we already have some Blender file, great. But this this is not a track, it's, that's the problem. How, let's make it a track, finally. What we need to do is, go to Scene Properties here. You can see the menu of SuperTux Card Scene Properties and Quick Export. And you can also see those buttons Export SDK Card and Track. They are currently disabled, but they are only appear because we have an exporter add-on. Without it, you cannot ex export it. There are no menus for that. Well, we want to make a tag. Let's call it simple tag. We should toggle something. Let's select Easy Super Tags Card Tag. Well, if you are making a card, you should pick a card. And if it's library node, which is just to be uh, supposed to be used in some other things. You select that. Well, let's call the folder also simple track and uh, call it simple track for now. Great, and save it. Well, 
what you need to know about this is uh, that you can well the name is how it will be shown in game how the attack will be shown in game but uh, this is just a folder name basically you can set it to literally anything the problem with that however is uh, uh, that it is better to make uh, the folder name named in the same way as your add-on will be named and generally it's better to follow the naming guidelines so basically if your track is named simple track the uh, when you will upload it when you upload it uh, SDK add-on site will make the following. Well, it, it will take take the name. Then, for, uh, for example, the name is 09, for example, just to have digits. First of all, it's, it, it will con convert the name to lowercase. And uh, remove all characters that are not digits and letters. Uh, okay, not remove, but replace them with dashes. And that's all. So the name should be like that. Spaces and uh, certain characters like ampersands will be replaced with dashes or minuses. If there is already an add-on with such a name, <laughs> it will append one, underscore one. If there are two add-ons, it will append underscore two. It's better to not do that. It's better to pick another name from already existing add-ons. Why, sh why following the guidelines for naming folders? Well, because first of all, it it looks better when there are no capitalized letters and strange characters, and secondly, be because if you follow these guidelines, you can just give the folder with the track to someone as an installable zip file. Uh, you can give it to someone before the release and then uh, some sites, some servers have automatically updated add-ons and uh, when you upload it to add-ons uh, your work in progress version will be automatically replaced by uh, the add-on version and uh, you won't have to do anything, you won't have to ask uh, the owners of the servers with automatically uploaded uh, updated add-ons to install the track there. You can just install it, you can just ask it while testing it on the server and then it will be automatically updated. It also saves uh, some time for people who install your track uh, if they do it manually or half manually like the server owners well uh, the short answer why using this name in pattern is because it's convenient for automatic things like updaters and stuff okay I don't really click uh, its work in progress track usually because like most of tracks that I done are work in progress if they're finished you don't need to open Blender anymore <laughs> probably it sets the group the, the, the tab of track to something I'm not sure or maybe it just uh, doesn't show it in without artist debug I'm not sure groups groups are names of tabs where the text will appear I strongly do not recommend set it to uh, setting to standard like default suggests. Set it to add-ons instead. Why? Because uh, if someone sets it to standard and then shares the folder, it means that uh, everyone who installs it will have it uh, among standard tags, and uh, the number of standard tags will be not 21 but something bigger. And that is not really what you want to do. For example, <laughs> if you want to disable add-on cards for the, uh, for saving some memory or something like that, it's bad. <laughs> you will still have some 
Pog and Pogus Tax. Alongside standards. You can also <laughs> separate something else, add another groups separated other groups separated by spaces spaces. The, uh, then there will be other tabs with your tab. I personally always select one tab with my name. The reason for that is uh and the reason why uh, you should be careful while setting the group, and I rather recommend using add-ons because it will just put it into uh, together with add-ons. The reason why I do it is that I don't share my tracks before I actually release them, except some really rare exceptions. <laughs> And that, uh, and another reason is that I want to have my tra my work in progress tags separately from uh, work in progress tags by other people. So I can just ta uh, click on tab with my name, and uh, and then I j I just have all work in progress tags I have, which are a lot actually. They are in different phases of making. <laughs> But at the same time, if I don't share the tracks before they're released, or if I share the tracks where the group is changed to add-ons, uh, it's okay. Because, uh, well, if you install a track with some new... Uh, if you install a track with a tab... Uh, not... It's a bad warning, I mean... If you install a track and it has something interesting in groups like mm -hmm. like some some group which you don't have you will just gain a new tab and if everyone uh, for example uh, will start sharing the, uh, their own tracks or cards or something uh, with groups set to their name it means that everyone who installs all of them will have way too many tabs, which is currently the case for me. <laughs> because there are groups Cool Tracks, Cyberpark, uh, Work in Progress, Work in Progress in different case, because there are no standards for that. I suggest doing like me. If you want to share something, put this to others. If you don't want to share it, put it as, I don't know, my tracks or your name. Designer is what is shown in the game, uh, like uh, the track, simple track by this name. You can put whatever you want, uh, I guess. <laughs> music is a music file. It's basically an XML file, which works like this. I cannot find it. Well, the file looks like that. It's just an XML. You can make it obviously yourself, and uh, it's advised to do so. Uh, you can specify the title and the compose, which will be visible in the game. Gain uh, loop start and uh, fast loop start is uh, parameters that are defined in the guide somewhere I don't remember actually where <laughs> probably in properties no <laughs> I uh, well you can see music and SFX guidelines there uh, the parameters are described in more detail but basically the file is just uh, a guide how to play the mu uh, which file which music file which org file to play how to play it and uh, what to display when it's played. <sighs> right. Cardgun card, card, card gun pre music is the really standard music. Together with uh, Penguin Party, they uh, they are two most used and the most boring and the most annoying track, tra uh, music tracks, because every track which doesn't have the custom music 
has this music and it's kinda annoying and no one really likes it. <laughs> screenshot is just a screenshot file, you can use JPEG or PNG, I usually use PNG. Regarding other artists, uh, Crystal user usually uses JPEG and uh, Mimis use PNG. But there are exceptions from that too. Sky type, you should set, leave it as, as is, as box. Plain color and done are not good options. Sky box is basically what you see around the track. They are basically just squares with textures. You can change the textures, but I guess it's not uh, of utter importance when making your first track. If your track is not actually a track, but a, a FFA arena, soccer field, CTF map, it you can t check, you can tick one or more of them. Please note that uh, if you tick the battle arena, your track will appear on the arenas tab in addons, not in tracks. And but soccer fields still appear as tracks. Camera far clip is for. Like, if it's set to 1000, one that means uh, objects further from uh, the camera by, by, by 1000 meters will be hidden. It's usually a fine setting. For indoor tracks, uh, you might even lower it. For outdoor tracks, you might increase it. But again, for your, your first track, it's not really important. Smooth normals is what you shouldn't enable. In fact, one one of standard text in this pond uh, had this changed from enabled to disabled in the middle of one release. Basically, it's supposed to make the road more smooth. Like no normal is a perpendicular to the plane of the face, so like smooth directions is uh, probably a more understandable name, but less precise. But in fact, in SDK, it does the opposite, unfortunately. Dive in and laps, you should tick can be driven in reverse. Because 99% of tracks do that. And uh, if you make a track that is not drivable in reverse, you can still tick it to make it drivable in reverse. For example, place some objects, like, I don't know, if the forward version contains a jump down, you could you can add, add an object for reverse that makes the climb up not uh, not very hard, let's say. And then there is a scripting to change that. Many tracks use scripting for exactly that, that kind of things, but scripting is slightly more different topic because it's really f functional, but at the same time <laughs> Less function that it could be. Number of laps is what you can change. Usually people set number of laps uh, so that the duration of game with this number of laps is uh, between 140 and uh, 240, 2 minutes 40 seconds. But there are exceptions. S some tracks have 20 laps for specific reasons. For example, Bone Breaker and uh, uh, Clash of 8 have 20 laps as default uh, as well as Cyberpark because uh, they don't get more repetitive with big number of laps because they are already <laughs> their corners are already not different let's say <laughs> and they're supposed to have a long run with uh, cake in everyone <laughs> Or something like that. I don't really know. But three laps is usually the default duration. You might want to set it to four or five if your track is short, or even six. For Oliver, uh, Oliver's math class, it should honestly should be like eight, but it's an exception rather. If your track is long, you might want to still put more than one lap, like. Most speed dreams boats and uh, some very long tracks might have more than one lap anyway, even though the duration would be big, because like they are intended for long races. 
start forward, sideward, and upward distance are not of the most important uh, are not the most important things to to worry about. Basically, uh, cards are standing on the grid like this. A certain number of cards per hour. And a certain number of hours depending on number of cards. And uh, this pattern repeats, like here the 11th place is just further away from the first place, but basically in the same place. So basically the forwards distance is the distance between two neighboring cards. Sideways distance is the same but in another direction. Upwards distance is, well, if your road is not flat, you might want to use it in the same way. You should note that uh, uh, if uh, there are n cards per row, the n plus first card is not right behind the first one, but rather it, it is shifted to the left by half the sideways distance and the whole row is actually shifted like this card is to the left of this the next row is correspondingly not behind the previous one, this one next row is located in the same place as this but more backwards more to the back <laughs> But that is not what you should be concerned about if you make the, your first track, which is most probably uh, having a flat surface at the starting grid and enough uh, place. You can toggle, the, you can change this to 2 or 5 or even 6 or 10. 3 is a reasonable number. If your track is, is wide, you can put more or change those distances if you think uh, the last card is too much behind. Weather is basically particles which you can use. It doesn't affect whether you have clouds or something. You need to do them yourself or provide the skybox. You can add rain or snow. You can add lightning effect which will have sudden light flashes and sound. You can change the sound if you need, but we won't do it right now. Graphical effects. Ambient light map is something <laughs> more complex but you can specify it if you need uh, dynamic shadows is probably something that should be ticked track time day or night please note that it doesn't if you change it it doesn't mean the track suddenly beca becomes night track it only regulates uh, you don't set the track mood and theme and colors with that you only tell the bl tell blender and exporter and SDK that uh, something like I made the track uh, look more like night and so please enable the headlights and taillights for the cars which is the only thing the setting changes fog is something like uh, it's for graphical effects, like so that lights are not just lights, but also have some uh, let's say they uh, the lights are the lights distribute uh, the photons to a, a bit wider area visually if you set the fog, but I will disable it basically. Uh, this is these are all the settings for SDK tag, but it will still fail to export because you need a dive line, which I will do in the next part of the video. Well, let's make the tag itself. For that, we need some idea what exactly we want to do. Okay, like we specified the name of the track and music probably and stuff. So music will be changed at some point. Well, but uh, we need to come up with layout. Let's do it directly in Blender. I don't know. Let it be like I'll change the color. Uh, mm. 
to something like yellow. Let's draw some straight. Regarding the layouts, uh, well, you may come up with something very, very simple. But at the same time, uh, well, if you make a track that is resembling circle pretty much, it's probably a bad layout. At the same time, it uh, could be really complex, but no one will ever notice that it's complex. You, because it, it's <laughs> players are just driving, they obviously can say, "Oh, what a mini map! It looks very complicated." Like they do with screw scraper, but that's another story to be honest. But I mean, the the text the, the, that looks like this are not really interesting to be honest because the turns are on the to the left or to the right, depending on direction to be honest. So okay, I just do something. Honestly, I call some layouts. Uh, I, I, I split the layouts into two categories, which I could draw and I couldn't. I always draw something with uh, sharp turns, 90 degree turns, and ba uh, almost always draw many turns. I don't know, obviously I didn't draw it very precisely, but I can do it again. Or with another color. Obviously, if you have a great idea for the track, uh, it's better to uh, understand what exactly do you want to see there, and uh, and probably draw a probably draw a really detailed map of what exactly do you want to see. For example, it could include something like here there would be a building, uh, here there would be a river and a bridge. bridge here, and the bridge here, something like there could be a pit lane that goes somewhere, there could be a big building, something else, but as I'm doing a very very simple track, I'm not gonna do it. Obviously for other tracks I do uh, draw it in a bit more detail, I will change the view a bit. I don't really like when the main straight is placed horizontally or vertically on the track. It, it's kind of not interesting for me. <laughs> I will hide the cube, or rather I will even delete it because I don't need it anymore. <laughs> I will draw with another color right now. Like, I don't know if this layout is good. I mean, yeah, uh, apart from details about uh, what is located where and about of br bringing some lore to uh, the track, uh, you need also to understand before doing everything or maybe in prog uh, while it is in progress, but it's more complicated then. You need to think about where the items could be, po uh, could be put, which special features the track needs or has, do you, whether you need scripting. Uh, items are important because there are not really many combinations of how, do you, how you can place items. Like, you can place a row of items. Uh, that may include bananas or not, that may consist of big, may, may have big nitros or not, small nitros, you can duplicate nitros actually, uh, how many items, how they will look like, and uh, some of them have some disadvantages and advantages. I will raise some part. Because I don't like it. But, okay. The, uh, this uh, right now I will not talk. I will not think much about it. I will just pretend I 
already thought about it. I didn't, but anyway, let's make it 90 degree too. I can adjust the mouse. I like those uh, very angular curves, to be honest. They won't be much very angular anymore. Anyway, but I mean that will be fixed when I will actually make a truck, and th there will be long, long, long state just for educational purposes. I will hide this. Probably this looks a bit more straighty. Let's say I have no idea what I will put or which textures I will use right now. You should know what you, you what you want to do. Like you don't, you are not required to know w which exact texture you are going to use. But uh, if you are making a track, uh, you probably want to know in advance whether it will be yellow or green or pink, something like that. Okay, May, uh, I don't really really like this layout. Like these turns are something I, I could do. This is kind of not. I will probably write, draw something else. Like, uh, I don't know. No, I don't like it either. I like this chicane, but I don't like this too. For some reason. Maybe like this. I will redo it again. Well, no, I don't like it again. <laughs> well, the direction will be counterclockwise because I just decided it like that. <laughs> anyway, it's just an notation. It's probably better to write, uh, to make it as a text uh, as a picture or as a square uh, picture than insert as a texture. I will probably show how to do it. It, it will probably resemble the uh, Istanbul Park turns. No, not like that. Or maybe as the same. I really want to the turn to go here for some reason and then she came. Maybe some Yeah like this but not this. Oh maybe like this. Okay. I don't know what it reminds me of. Maybe if I rotate it like this, it's kind of deformed Harris track. Like, it's like uh, this, probably. Actually, it's letter pi. <laughs> no, <laughs> I don't know. It's kind of deformed, but no. Maybe actually for this track I will. make the straight horizontal or vertical probably I like it more like this yeah by the way you can use mouse wheel which is not visible right now I'm using it to zoom and also you can use shift mouse wheel I mean shift no, 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 no. just mouse wheel uh, scrolling to zoom mouse wheel uh, uh, mouse wheel pressing to rotate. I already showed that, shown that, but you can also mouse wheel plus shift to just move. Probably I will make it like one, one two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, ten, nine, eight. Probably I will rotate it by. Uh, 120 degrees 
Okay, I have the layout. I have a very, very long state. I have no idea what materials I'm going to use. But let's do something basic. By the way, was the yellow much different? Well, kind of. Here, if you, dry, if you draw the layout, something like that, you already should uh, think what exactly you are going to do. Because, as you might know about that or not know, but if you have a very long straight, it's going to be pretty boring. Okay, maybe if you have items, a bit less boring, but still. Usually there are uh, zippers or jumps put on the straight that uh, allow it to be less boring or take less time. Maybe I will put zippers around here and around here. Also, you most of the time you should consider that there is a reverse direction. So like, for example, if I put all zippers here, for the reverse direction, they will act he here and uh, will put you into a situation when you have to complete a turn with a very big, big speed. So it's better to put them in on both sides or rather somewhere in the center if there is one set of zippers. I'm not sure about items, but anyway. Okay. How do we proceed since then? Okay, we do the layout, but uh, all we know is how to make some objects, how to add default cubes, how to uh, move its vertices, how to d d d how to extrude its vertices, how to rotate them, how to make more vertices and edges, but we don't know how to make this exact shape. shape. Well, for that, for that uh, the usual method, the very common method, is to make a busy, busy curve. Uh, let's... Well, it doesn't really matter where. I still have to view. We will create busy curve, like add curve busy. Well, and then we got something, we don't really see it. We can zoom in and get something like that. This is how the default busy curve looks like. We need to go in the right menu and uh, select Curve Properties, which is denoted by a curve. Make sure it's 3D. It's usually 3D, but sometimes not. Uh, well, you can also make it 2D if your track won't have any elevation change. I'm actually not sure if I will have elevation change. Maybe yes. Uh, but what you need to do is change twist method from menu to the top. Well, because the guides say it, say it like that. I'm not sure in which thing. Yes. Twist method to the top. Well, and now what we need to do is uh, modify the curve. It's somewhere very in a very bad place, not where I want it to be. For that I need to use edit mode, obviously. Yeah, by the way, it's... Uh, right now it is flat. Well, let me change to edit mode. Yeah, by the way, edit, changing between object mode and edit mode are done with tab. Yes. Okay, and uh, if I zoom into the curve, it looks like this. Basically, uh, curve, uh, curves are con can consist of control points, which can be rotated. They have the following sense. Let me select all of them. It, uh, it means, well, uh, curve also has direction, but I guess for the purpose of this track it's not really important. Basically, you can see uh, two two triples of points and uh, the central point is actually where the curve will go so it will go through this point and through this point and the other points are are showing the direction 
where it goes. Like at this specific point, the curve goes in this direction. And in this specific point, the curve goes in this direction. Well, it goes, if it goes uh, from left to right, it goes here. And then it goes here, in the, at this specific point, at the central point of this triple. Yeah, and in the mid, it changes its direction, and the longer this segment is, uh, is between uh, one of control points and the central point, the close the angle will be to the angle that is specified here. For example, if I try to scale this, by the way, uh, all the co control points, this and this, and this and this, they are scaled with respect to central point always. And uh, one important difference for curves uh, from other objects is that if I select the point, the central point and the control points are selected at once. To select only one of them, you need to deselect something. Like we can do something like that, but still, uh, control points are uh, relative to central point. But I wanted to tell that if I want to scale this point, you can see that uh, somewhere in the middle of the curve the angle becomes more close to the angle defined by this control point. Like if I do it really much, you can see that even the point in the middle is somewhat going in this direction. <laughs> It is usually fine if the segments have roughly the same length. They are not right now. Yeah, but and you can extrude this curve, like you can take this, press E, and extrude it somewhere. Obviously, you need it to be as smooth as possible. You, you can rotate, obviously, you can scale, you can move. Like, uh, right now it looks like that, and if I switch back to object mode, it looks like that. Well, it can seem like a good curve, but it in isn't, in fact. The problem is uh, we will use this curve to model this track, and uh, uh, the curve won't be the final object. The final object will just follow the curve, and the and the more smooth the curve is, the less the object will have some artifacts like overlapping stuff, and so on. Yeah. By the way, uh, uh, there is a big difference between scaling and uh, rotating in object mode and in edit mode for objects that have, well, for, for most all objects that have verti some vertices inside. Like, if I rotate the curve in object mode, it, it will rotate, but it will have uh, a rotation that is not zero. And if I scale, the same thing. It will have rotation of three, but internally, it will still be uh, the same curve. Like, scaling and rotation can be global and local. When we do it in, do them in object mode, they are we apply globally to this curve, this uh, rotation scale. But internally, the curve is still the same as before. It, it is shown as not the same, but internally it's still looking like that. Something like this. Yes, and uh, therefore there are two pairs of coordinates, like there are local points and local points. When we scale and rotate in object mode, local coordinates don't change, but global always change. And if we rotate in it in another way, let me cancel it, it was like this. If we rotate everything, select everything and rotate Along, around Z, obviously. It's better to specify that we rotate around Z. And then scale. Local coordinates will change, too. 
and it's better for most objects to apply the changes locally like to rotate locally and uh, to scale locally uh, so that the rotation and the uh, scale don't affect anything in the perfect fault you should have zero 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 here and one 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 here but if you accidentally rotate and uh, rotated and scaled in object mode that's not a problem like let's do it again but in object mode and di in a different way right we have mi mi minus 94.6 and 5.7 you can press ctrl a and uh, apply relation scale basically you can also apply location what this thing does is it, it changes the object from, insi from inside from edit mode so that it's location if you choose it, rotation if you choose it, and scale if you choose it to default ones. Loca default location is zero, but default rotation is zero, default scale is one. But I will apply rotation scale so that the center is somewhere here still and not somewhere in the zero which is in another place. But now internally this point is to, to the left of this point. It's important to apply rotation scale to such type of things. For some objects it might be not maybe not, not needed or well there is one situation when you need to keep rotation scale at uh, object mode level at global level. It's when like uh, I don't know, you want to make several such objects or you you, you, you don't, it, you rotated it in some way and want to rotate them back, but I don't know. I mean, it depends uh, solely on you how to use it. You just need to know that there is a global uh, set of coordinates and local set of coordinates and local set of coordinates is uh, maybe different for each object. By the way, you can if you have rotated it, it, rotated the object, not necessarily the curve, and scaled, you can move it along x, along x-axis, just as usual, but you can also press GXX, and then it will move some uh, in a different way. The reason for that is uh, if you press XX twice, it uh, says you are moving along local x. That that means it moves along the local x-axis, which is the x-axis in local coordinates of the subject. Obviously, if you apply rota rotation scale, uh, the axis will be the same. Same goes for movement. You uh, you can, uh, uh, I mean, not for movement, but for units. If you scale the object by two. Like, like let's do it <laughs> and then you want to gx1 okay it moves somewhat, somewhat but if we do gxx1 it will move probably in a different way <laughs> anyway I will delete this curve <laughs> and we'll do a curve that corresponds to this layout it will be flat by default Let's start from this point, for example. This here, cool. The top. Now I go to edit mode and just extrude it as, as I want. I will scale it because I don't see it's too small. Yeah, by the way, you can just go move cursor to the right all the time and it will never go out. I will rotate it. So, okay. I will move this point somewhere here and rotate. Well, it's not really visible what I'm doing because of annotation drawing. But let's hide it. Oh, I, I actually don't need to hide it. I can set an opacity of something. 
now I kind of see what happens. Except that the red color is not good. You don't have to use annotations again. It, you could just do the same thing, but uh, with texture. Let's make it blue. Let's make it blue. How to do a texture? Well, you can draw the same thing on the texture, for example, 512, 512 times 512, and then use uh, add the plane, which uses this texture as a material. I will cover it a bit later, but uh, then it, it can serve in the same way as notation here. Okay, I have a curve. I probably need to scale a bit the control points a bit down. Actually, annotations are still too bright. I don't like. For me, a reminder where to go is enough. And probably I will disable the zippers now anyway. Actually, I want it to be really straight. So I will just make it vertical uh, for once, and then I will rotate it. Well, to make it vertical, I will make SX0, and here too. I mean, for all these vertices, I can make X SX0. <laughs> now they are completely vertical, but uh, they are scaled slightly differently. And then, if I want to continue it vertically again, I will do e extrude E. Y and some value. Probably not enough. I can go y alongside Y anyway. And repeat it. Let's now rotate it because it's, it, it seems like enough of enough of length. Rotate it along Z, around Z. Mm, something like that. Now we need to make a curve. I will extrude. Uh, place it in a point that I want to be on the tag and make a direction. You can see that uh, it goes slightly inside the road. Probably it's not visible. Let's make it a bit more visible. Maybe. probably visible like that. You can see that the curve goes slightly inside. For that we can do this thing. It's better to do it from both sides of the curve, like this, and this here and here. Let's do indivi uh, scale around individual origins. Well, you can see that if we scale too much it starts to have a loop. It's not good. But I mean, we can still move the points. I can move it here. And, and generally it's not it's okay if it doesn't exactly correspond to the layout. I'm not really sure if it's better to place the uh, I forgot how it's called. This contour point. Uh, I to place the real points of the curve in the middle of straight line or not. But I will just put, in, put, put, put the mostly in the middle, some in the curves. Uh, I will not scale the contour points right now. I'm not sure it's really visible. Maybe I should increase somehow the curve thickness. Well, anyway, I will just make some control points, and uh, you see that the curve is going too much. Right, I will reduce the control points anyway. Okay, let's just make all handles with you.
I'm just extruding and rotating, nothing more. And sometimes scaling. You can do it without much zooming in. Well, the curves are not really very angular. They are rather smooth. But I mean, you can just scale the contour points away to make them less smooth. The curve most probably needs uh, adjustment anyway. Well, currently it looks like this. Without annotations, it looks like well, kind of too smooth. But that's not a problem. We can fix it a bit later. I will make it less opaque. I slightly scaled down the, cont the control points here and uh, didn't put everything as at the same distance. Well, the more con control points you have, the better, but also it means you can make <laughs> too much out of the curve, too much. Uh, <laughs> Too little straightness, maybe. <laughs> anyway, we will be able to adjust it. And uh, probably it will need adjustment later when we make the track itself. Here I will put it uh, at the core. Here I will put it in the center. Without. Currently it looks like that, which kind of resembles what I wanted, but slightly more smooth than I do. make it slightly different from what I do. Well, and we, came, and we came to the point when it's almost done, but we need to close it somehow. Or maybe we don't. Well, the uh, we need to start the curve around the starting point, which is probably here. Let's just 
We selected the segment between two control points. Let's delete the segment. Now we have two segments. But we need to connect this and this. We need to... well, we need to pass F. Now we have kind of stitched in here. At the same time, we got something. Well, and we probably still need to do something like this. I mean, well, probably I did it for nothing, I shouldn't have broken it. This is also okay. I will just extrude this vertex to this vertex and it will be fine. It's not necessary that the curve is... I mean, well, let's... It, it's better if it, it's actually closed. Let me undo it and uh, make the segment here, F. Okay, now we have a curve. I need to adjust it, obviously. I, I can do it without notations, I will just make them more sharp, make the turns more sharp. I wonder why they're so dark. Maybe I should change the theme for now. Well, it's better visible, but probably your eyes might not handle it. Well, basically, to make it more sharp, we can scale the control points. But at the same time, if we scale them too much, uh, it will be bad. Then there can be loops. And now it looks like that. Kind of more sharp and good. Note that it accidentally can become a negative uh, negative scale coefficient. Where is the angle also bad here? It's bad. And here. Well, actually the very uh, acute angles can cause problems with self intersections. But that's not a problem, we'll fix it anyway. Well, right now it looks like this. I promised to rotate it by 120 degrees. So I did it. Maybe I should rotate it even more. Uh, yes, I like it like that. Okay, we have a curve. What else now? Well, I need to apply this. Well, we need the road. The road should, should consist of some vertices, edges, and traces. For that, we have great things called modifiers. We will just create one play. Let's create a play. We will make it of width. I don't know. Let's make... oh, it's 20 times 20. I don't really like it. Let's make the width... The width will be Y, because uh, I want the road to go from left to right. For the modifiers. Let's set the width to 10. And the length to 2, for example. Ok, 4. This will be a part of the road, so basically what we will do is uh, making the road look like a big, big horizontal line, and then we will we will 
place it along the curve. You can choose another direction uh, in, uh, when applying, applying the modifier, but let's just do it. You can actually select not 4 meters, but I don't know, 2 or, or 8 or 6, I don't know. The less is uh, x dimension, the more precise your road is, but the, the more polygons it has to. I think it's fine like that. I'll look at the again. Okay, we have the road and we have a curve. Okay, we can add the modifier array and it has some options. Well, basically what array does is placing uh, several objects of uh, of the object, uh, several instances of the object uh, on which it's applied together with some offset. You can do it without offset, but why? It, it's equivalent to duplicate. Some offset one, uh, one as in one object width. There are many other offsets, but uh, I don't think you will use it uh, soon. You can choose either to make several copies, like three, or four, or five, or six. Or you can uh, ask uh, to make the to make a certain number of copies so that the total length is 100 meters, for example. Well, I don't think it, it is 100 meters, but okay. Maybe I'm doing something wrong right now. Ah, well, it, it, it says it's 100 meters because uh, the plane itself it has scaling. If I ap apply rotation and scale, it will be indeed 100 meters. And I can also choose fit curves, fit curve, which is what I need. It will do the same as fit length, but uh, place the some number of instances not to fit to to, to hit the certain le length, but to fit the length of curve. And I need to select this curve. Okay, we get very much, very many instances. They don't fit the screen, but okay. The second thing to do is okay first of all we don't apply this modifier now you you can apply it by i don't know clicking call, uh, clicking on it and pressing ctrl a this is how we apply modifier but we don't do it now modifiers are good because you can actually preview what you are doing without applying them so you can cancel them at, at, at any time and but uh, while previewing you can edit objects like they don't have them like i can click this button for example and the modifier will be not applied visually and now it's applied visually this is the button that applies the modifier visually or not in edit mode which is also important like i can go to edit mode and uh, you can see that the object is just one but uh, there are many like you i can edit only one object obviously but shown are many many of them are shown and if i disable this button only one object is shown which is convenient because i can edit uh, leave the edit mode and uh, return back to it anyway what i'm going to do is uh, fold back this modifier and add curve modifier which is basically uh, making the object inside, in this case the object modified by array modifier, fit the curve. Well, it didn't fit quite well for a few reasons. First of all, mm, if you uh, move an object uh, alongside, along x axis, it kinda moves, but it doesn't for us because the curve is closed. If the curve wasn't closed, it would move 
uh, and or, or if maybe if uh, the object was not as long as, as the curve, it would move alongside the curve indeed. But it does. It seems like it doesn't because the curve is closed. But if we move the object alongside, why? You can see that uh, very strange things, and you can see that there is a y which corresponds to our curve. We want it like that, obviously. But the easier uh, method to do it is just move the plane for which, to which we apply modifiers to the same place as curve. Well, we do Shift S and uh, re uh, move the 3D, cur 3D cursor to the origin of curve, and then move to the, that point the plane, and it does the same thing. Like, I mean, it didn't do anything because we already moved it there. But, I mean, we can do whatever. Like, why? What is this even? It's actually the thing that uh, you get if you try to... Well, if this is the actual tag, if you move uh, the object before modifiers alone, why? You get something... Uh, uh, that resembles how the border of the tag would like. And uh, the same goes for uh, y in the negative direction, but for the other, for the right side, let's say. But we will just uh, move it as it needs, uh, to, to the place where it, it needs to be. Just in case we uh, should apply rotation scale to the plane, and now we can uh, apply the modifiers. Well, now we have something like this. If we go to edit mode, you can see that there are many, 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 many polygons that actually go to the left. Great. One small problem, and also the thing that you should always do, is to remove doubles. Let me even write it. It's very important. Very, very important because, well, if you have two vertices in, in the same place, you could as well have objects duplicating each other, edges duplicating each other, and then uh, if one vertex is connected to... Let's suppose we have a vertex, and another vertex is connected to it, and another vertex is connected to it too, uh, we would obviously look, uh, uh, make a face between them, but I mean... We cannot make a face if uh, one of us is split into two or three parts or more. And after making this modifier, as this modifier only makes a few inst as array modifier only makes a few instances of the object, and curve then uh, makes them along, uh, lie along the curve, we still need to go to edit mode and remove doubles. How to do it? We need to select everything with A and then press M. Actually, in 279 Blender uh, version, there was a separate option of doubles, that's why it's called remove du doubles. But in 28 and 293, it moved, it's moved to merge by distance. You can see that 1,700 1, vertices are removed. But there is a menu which is very useful. Usually, when you uh, want to merge all vertices uh, that are located in the same place, you should use this distance, like 10 to the power of minus 4 meters, which is like 0 0.1 millimeters. 1 millimeter is also okay, I guess. Uh, sometimes, in re really extreme cases, you might, need, you might merge vertices in the distance which are located on, uh, by, uh, at the distance one centimeter, but uh, it's not that often. 
smaller distances are not needed because like uh, there are al uh, there may be already errors while c calculating all the coordinates for these operations of rotating scaling and stuff well basically what this operation do is it's uh, it, it merges all vertices which are at at most certain distance from each other so like i could make it five meters and then there are much less much fewer vertices but it looks like a tri uh, triangle first i will make it back basically what we also did we obtained this thing if i enable the wireframe mode <laughs> well we got some grid Okay, great. The problem with that is, well, the curve was cyclic. Uh, that is, it, it was closed, but we have some overlapping in the place where we put the, the last vertices. We should merge them. Let's select th these two vertices and merge them. There are several op uh, options. You can merge them by distance, but I mean, <laughs> it will merge at the center probably. You can merge at the center at the cursor, which is not our option now because it's far away. You can merge them. We can collapse them, which would do something else. So I will just move them at the center, and this two, and this two, and this two, two. Okay. Now it's more or less fine. Okay, it's slightly rough here, but okay. So we got the track. The problem is it's most likely too narrow and too long, because if we use the measurement, it's only the straight is almost one kilometer long. <laughs> it's probably highly dis disproportional. So I will delete the stack <laughs> or rather I will return to the state where there were modifiers well I guess well th the problem is you cannot cancel too many actions so I will rather do it from scratch I remove the play <laughs> erase all those notations and proceed ok I will make a plane again <laughs> Let's make it again for ten. That is actually ten meters is not a small road to be honest. And also we can make it not just the road, we can actually add an off road there. But anyway, let's let me just apply the modifiers. Well, for some reason, it didn't get the length I needed. And but you can see that if you move it by x, along x, it goes on the curve. Pretty cool, I should say. Ah, well, it doesn't have the length because I forgot to apply rotation scale. That's why. <laughs> okay, I will leave it as is. The problem is we need to make a dive line. Drive line is basically looking like that, li like this. It looks like a chain of quadrilaterals. I mean, I'm drawing really bad, but those all are quadrilaterals with all common vertices. For a circular track, it looks like this. There should be no faces.
something like that, but with a few changes. Dimeline is basically, so that you understand, Dimeline is basically what makes uh, the game load the minimap. Minimap is done according to Dimeline. And also what enables the bots to drive. <sighs> well, and uh, there is a start point in, in this drive line, but how do it? How does the sticky determine where is the start point? Well, very easy. We just take one of quads where the starting point should be, make si uh, edges like this, which are called antennas, and remove those edges. Well, let me draw antennas a bit better. This where uh, th this is still a quad, this here. But we just don't have two edges, and so it uh, for STK it means that the start line is here, and we go here. This is how the drive line looks like, and actually, if we d make a track with the uh, array and curve modifiers, we can do the drive line in this completely the same way. Except that we probably need to apply the modifiers. And uh, without the dive, dive line, we cannot export anything. So let's just duplicate the plane, hide this plane for once, and this plane we will make it without a face. We will just select all vertices, which are 4, and uh, press X, and uh, delete only faces. Ok, now we have a faceless thing, which is the same as the tag. We can apply modifiers, remove doubles, check the distance, that the distance is ok. We still have some but in here probably, yes, we have it here. I'm pressing the numpad dot. We can still unite this and this and this and this. And now the drive line is okay, but it doesn't have an antennas for the start line. Let it be somewhere around the console. Yeah, somewhere around here is okay. We need to extrude the vertex and extrude the, this vertex here. It doesn't really matter where. And we need to select these two edges and delete them. Only edges and faces. Well, we have no faces anyway, but just in case. Now it looks like this. The drive look, look, looks like this and the track is also there. Drive line needs to be without modifiers. I'm, uh, but I guess, uh, well, the track is not really smooth here, I guess. But anyway, we can already try it in game. Except that uh, Blender and SDK do not know what is driveline. Let's just rename it to driveline. Names here do not mean anything, it's just for organization. And this should be the track. Okay. We should select driveline. We should click on object properties. And uh, at the bottom there is SuperTux called Object Properties. Using animated texture is something about... Uh, is should be probably told later. This I don't even know what is it, to be honest. And we need to select type Driveline Main. Because there, there can be additional drivelines, which I will probably cover too. Activate. For now we will put here Lab. In fact, it will, uh, we should put the first check line here and put lab for something else, but let it be like that right now. Mean height testing and max height testing are for determining if the card is on drive line, if it's below for, uh, uh, by at most one meter and ab or above for at most by at most five meters, it counts as being on drive line. Let's just export the tag. 
it will export it almost instantly for complex projects is it is a rare thing to be honest and now we need to run the SDK I will run it with disable add-on cards so that it doesn't load very many things well I put it into the folder with my name so I will be easily able to edit I hope it doesn't have loud sound. <laughs> well, it doesn't. Well, we can change the sound, obviously. Well, we can select any card. We can select the tag. It should be in folder. But there is none. Well, guess why? Because something went wrong. <laughs> something went wrong, and uh, let's look what went wrong. Actually, actually, it probably didn't get ex exported anywhere because for the quick exporter we need to select assets data path we need to select stk assets path because this is the place where it export, ex exports text, text well it is somewhere here it's stk media repo this is stk assets we need to select this now we have well we had button here but we have button here now too we can export it. STK probably didn't load this stack, so we need to restart it again. That's too bad. We can set the tag, and now there is a folder, a tab. We can see a simple tag without screenshot because there is no screenshot GP, JPEG. We can start it. I will disable it completely. And what we see is a white row because we have no textures. We can drive on it. We can, without this debug mode, we can press insert and have infinite nitro we can see the minimap on the left if it's not hidden by the track itself because track is not textured at all we can see that the track well it's not really narrow but compared to its length it's really narrow so we can try to make it wider and also downscale it a bit well it seems like pretty boring even go uh, even going between the curves also if you haven't put any other objects uh, stk will rescue the card as soon as uh, there is no ground down, uh, under it that's why it rescues and also it rescues the card if it is it has no speed, almost no speed and uh, it also is at the angle of more than 60 degrees from the last place visited on the timeline well, I didn't really try to go fast but I guess the lap is already like 2 minutes ok, I fell a few times sometimes intentionally but uh, the lap time sh de definitely shouldn't be like <laughs> two minutes for this tag. I intended it as a simple tag. And well, I still have half of straight to pass. <laughs> yeah, and uh, generally for the track of normal length, the minimap doesn't look 
so thin. Well, it took like 2 minutes 10 seconds. We can press Ctrl F2 to get into flying camera mode. You can see that the track is okay. It's smooth enough. But it's e extremely long. You don't even see the card there. Yeah, also you can press I and fly and press K to go down. Well, but anyway, uh, it's not exactly what we want. Let's change it. Well, if the lap time was something like 210, okay, without night on zippers, which we want to place, but we want it like to be like, uh, I don't know, maybe 40 seconds. This is actually 130 seconds. Okay, we can divide it by three or even four. Let's divide it by 3.5. 3. How do we downscale track? Very easily. We just uh, take the curve and scale it by 3.5 and not multiplying but dividing. Well, now we have a track that is 3.5 times smaller. But we can also see that it's not smooth now. And that the driveline is not corresponding to it. Well, because the driveline is has already applied modifiers. Oops, I deleted the track actually. I de now I delete the driveline. Okay. Maybe I should have scaled by one third. Okay, I will scale it back by 3.5 and scale and divide by 3. That way it's a bit longer. I want to erase this. And maybe for this length uh, the width is okay. The problem, however, is that the tech is not smooth anymore. Probably. Like, this is how it looks. Like, what is this? What is this? Boom, boom, boom. It's bad. We will subdivide, uh, subdivide the surface later, anyway. But maybe it's better to make changes in the track itself. Let's go to edit mode. Well, we are already in edit mode, for, but for busy curve. We need to go back to the track. And go here. Let's uh, make the x dimension twice smaller. And probably the width. Well, I will disable modifier for visuals. And make uh, it not 10 meters, but for example, 12. Okay, now we can go back. It It is a bit wider now, but the curve is kind of implying that this thing is very sharp, which is bad. Because, for example, if we apply the modifiers, okay, we need to apply rotation scale first. If we apply the modifiers, we will see that there are quads like that, and it's really bad because the textures will be down as corrupted. Like, imagine having a square texture that is fit into this. No, that is bad. So I will roll back the modifiers and try to change the curve instead. We can see that compared to, uh, to the track width, this thing and this thing are really overscaled. Okay, maybe reducing one is enough. And reducing this thing is probably also enough. Well, and it generally becomes more smooth. The more smooth the 
angles here are, the better. Basically, well, if you see the vertices uh, of, of a surface without uh, going to edit mode, then it's bad. Here I don't see them. Here I see them. That it's probably bad, but uh, not so much. At distance, it's harder to see. And I will sub subdivide the surface anyway. That is, I will apply another modifier to make it more smooth. So it's okay. Here I don't see anything bad, except that, okay, I could scale down a little bit, rather scale down here. Okay. Here it's alright, I guess. Here it's not alright. Now it's much better than before. Okay, it's not as sharp. And here uh, it, there is a very bad thing. The, the corner here is so sharp that the track faces intersect each other. That means I need to scale down something here really much, like this, like this. Now you can see it's a smooth corner. I mean, the corners are a bit more smooth than I wanted, but I mean, you need to scale uh, to upscale the track. Then. And here the same thing. Sometimes just scaling those things is not enough. We need to move them also. Or even we can just delete them completely. Well, the curve did, doesn't go here. Well, we could collapse instead. Well, anyway. We can subdivide this segment back. And then move it somewhere like here. So that we have one point instead of two. Let's rotate it a bit. Move it a bit. If the vertex is located right in the toe, it's better to upscale it, not downscale, obviously. Well, here it's almost fine. Well, if you downscale it, this happens. Probably this should be rotated generally moved somewhere well, kind of like that it's already good in terms of being smooth sharp turns are the ones that need, need more fixes sometimes you need to adjust something well, the tech is pretty wide the turns are going to be very heavy friendly. Well, this is a, sh a shop too. We have to make it a bit less sharp, fortunately. Well, but it will be a very slow section anyway, because the track is like very pretty wide. Maybe I should make it 10 meters again. Like, I will SY divide by 6 and then SY 5. It will be 10 meters again. But I will probably add some, not really slowing down of course. Well, because it's more narrow, now it, it is more smooth, probably. This curve is kind of not 
so smooth that would be a bit more round we can move them a bit maybe even rotate oops I accidentally extruded it and here we obviously want to make it as good as possible let's make the state a bit less tight well, maybe I should just dissolve this vertex well, what is going on? For some reason, something is going wrong. Well, maybe it's not wrong. It's just the last vertex in the way. Let's just subdivide it. Yes. This uh, gray overlapping is only because... Only because uh, the plane is repeated the integer number of times. That's why it kind of overlaps, but we will fix it anyway. Maybe this state needs a bit of a reconfiguration, like this. This should go like that. Well. I wanted to put a zipper here, but I guess maybe not. Looks like, I don't know, two legs. We can test it. Obviously we can duplicate the tag and make the drive line again, like, in the same way. I will not repeat it. Well, we can remove faces late. We need to remove doubles. It is a drive line and uh, it surely has some artifacts here. Here. MA is how I merge at center. And somewhere in the middle, like here, we need to make antennas and select two edges and move them. Well, this is dive, which is good. Probably it will be less boring. We need to sit up. Not that it comes up anyway, but okay. Well, it exported. Well, I will also press F10 to get infinite zippers. Well, I need to start. The lap time uh, should be around, I don't know, 45 seconds maybe. Well, there are turns, and they're not very wide. I mean, it's still 10 meters in width. The turns are not very wide, which makes them a, a bit more challenging than, than boring. Uh, at least as res it rescues me as needed, because there is a dive line. And now there is a big, big state. Well, the lap time is 40 seconds, considering there will be nitro and items. It's pretty good. You can also see that bots can play it. 
because all bots need are driveline and something under it. <laughs> Well, some fail, it happens. Considering there is no land around. Well, actually, if I made the length of. Uh, the width of 12 meters, it would be a bit less challenging. I mean, it already would be less challenging because I will put some of road but if it slows down it will be challenging anyway it would be a good track with many turns and a big straight well, I'm first but the lap counting doesn't work because we didn't set up any check lines without check lines it's prob probably also okay but for some reason it doesn't I don't m really mind I will use the debug one just to show the layout and the minimum point in reality. Well, okay. All right. The track is probably fine. We might already apply modifiers. Probably. Well, the, the track already looks nice, but what if we add some elevation change? We could make it so that, I don't know, for example, the curvy part goes up and then uh, it slowly, slowly goes down. Or maybe it, uh, if it even, it was, it would be good if it went down only in these slow ch chicanes but again, we only need to modify the curve let's just do it of course the curve has to be set to 3D and uh, I mean we don't even need to look at the tag a good way to look at the ob edited, editing, at the edited object only is to press slash at uh, numpad keyboard and then you only see this object like you can even do it in the object mode you can see only the curve now you can rotate it as you wish this may be you also used with several objects if you select several objects and then the slash then it works let's just raise some points by by some levels like let's say it should be that one well actually uh, they are all already they, they were all uh, already at zero what do you mean global minus nine ah well the curve is located at, uh, at minus one at minus nine is that coordinate Just check something. Okay. Let's just set, for example, this to one. This to two. It's not actually much. Let we can uh, well, let it be three, four. We can edit it later anyway. Six, seven, okay, eight, ten. Ten meters isn't actually very much. Let it ju let's just see how it goes. So it's like eleven, twelve. Here the distance is bigger than fourteen. Uh, 16 and I want the, here to be the big drop of elevation 17 
18. Happily for this track, we can allow ourselves to make big elevation changes because like if this point was somewhere here it would be much more difficult because like having a natural transition between ground uh, at big height and ground and uh, low, low height uh, almost in the same place having a natural transition is pretty complicated to be honest well anyway here the elevation is slowly slowly increasing for example 23 24 25 and here for, for all the points let it be just 25 and then let's stop it back to zero we have 1 2 3 4 5 Six, seven, eight, nine things. Okay, let, let it be ten. So, like two and a half units. No, oh, well, it's okay. It's 20, 12, 25 already. Twenty-two point five. Twenty. Well, I can assign them manually as I do right now, but I could also use proportional editing or something like that. Should be twelve and a half. Oops, ten. Well, in fact, I would like to be to, for the eleva biggest elevation change to be in the tilts. But I mean, you can see that you can see how it looks, and with the track, it looks like this, like can see that on the left, well, we have driveline at level zero. You, we can see that the track is kind of above it. But also we can see that it's kind of strange, strangely looking, the elevation changes. That's because the curve itself looks pretty strange, like it's not uniformly descending. For that we need to change some Z coordinates of controls. For that, well, front and right perspectives are okay. Actually, we can, well, we can see that other vertices are kind of disturb disturbing the view. We can select these vertices, we can Co uh, press Ctrl I to select the rest, and we can pr press H to hide them. Then we only see those vertices. And we can con uh, Alt H to unhide what was hidden. Well, anyway, I want orthographic projection, and now I will. GZ everything so that it's a bit more smooth. And also, obviously, I have to change it, I have to look at it with some other perspective, maybe change something. Well, it looks kind of fine here, and if we return the track, we can see that it's really pretty smooth. Like that part where we can see that there are some bumps, which I will fix now. Well, I will hide the vertices already. Oh wait, actually I did it a bit wrong. No, ah, it's okay.
maybe this vertex should be a bit more long. Now I will hide the, this vertices and uh, show the others. This I will probably hide too because there is no elevation change. Okay. Uh, this can be a bit lower. This is this can be a bit lower, but not much. This can be a bit high. I mean, the central control points are also okay to change. Well, is there really such a big wall? Well, it's rather a slow elevation change. Well, I'm just slightly moving the controls down. So that it looks a bit more smooth. Nothing else. Well, the total elevation change up is like 25 meters. Well, this should be probably S at zero. Well, probably it's more or less okay now. Well, and we can tie it. Obviously, it's better if the dive line coincides, but. As it's in the same place, it's probably not really affecting. We will type with bots so that it's an understandable where to go because when the road is kind of not visible, like in the case of elevation change. It might be useful because the road is one-sided, and by the way, oh, holy shit! I'm sorry. I mean, yeah, you cannot rescue here because the drive line is below the road. I will wait a bit so that I don't crash into bots. Well, the bots will rescue under the road because I didn't bother changing the timeline. I was going only to rate how the, how the track looks like. So that's why I'm going pretty slowly. Well, th this is the highest point. I mean, I can increase the... Oh, wow. This is the turn and there was some bump. Well, I could slightly increase the angle, like slightly increase the height, but it already looks like this. Obviously I will subdivide the track, but... Well, maybe it's okay like this. At, at the very end, uh, we don't plan to create something extraordinary right now as the first stack. So let's just 
do the drive line in the same way. Yes, but uh, the other thing is uh, most stacks requires require offloads. They require offload, which means that well, we will need to fill all this with something and all this too, and especially that there is a eleva an elevation change. Well, and preferably uh, there should be like a big space so that a person cannot just look from the track and uh, say that it's in the middle of nowhere. I mean, at least a single plane is okay. Obviously it's better to put some trees and uh, other objects. But, I mean, when while filling all this space, we need to fill it uh, in the way that doesn't really look ugly near the track. So, for that reason, I will make not, not just the track, uh, uh, but uh, I will change the original plane used for the track and add of some of all to it. And also apply some textures. Let me do it. Well, we have mod one modifier applied. In edit mode and, and, and the other the is not. Okay, let's just texture something. We can go to material properties and add the new material. Uh, what we need to do here? In a very in very basic words, we need to select base color, select image texture, open something, and we need to open a folder. Uh, we need to find SDK Media Repo, which is here for, for us. And here we can, for example, take the generic folder, uh, the textures, then generic, and then take any texture. It's should preferably be uh, the road texture, but do we really mind right now when we just want to texture with something? For example, is there a road texture? Well, we can go to another folder. I don't know. Let's just pick any texture. For example, send road A. Okay. Uh, is it is the only material, so all all the faces of this plane will be textured with it. As you can see, it's uh, very much scaled. The texture is scaled here because it's not a square, and the texture is square. Also, what we need to do is backface scaling, set to on. You can enable and disable it, but what it does is basically making transparent the back side of the face. Like in most uh, graphical engines, only one side of the face is textured. And if you want two sides of the face to be textured, you rather make uh, made uh, uh, a duplicate face on some at some distance like very small distance but not at the same place there is a general approach to never have duplicate vertices that's why you should al always remove doubles if possible and that's why back backface Kalin is uh, more or less all right for this purpose because it will show you first of all which side the face is facing to like here the face is facing up and the down face is not textured which is the case for STK2 <sighs> well and then uh, you need to probably uh, you don't have to but you can select a shader for most textures it's PBR solid and you can if you choose it you can select gloss maps and normal maps which I will probably do but not but, but for textures from media repo you don't have to do it and well okay 
Now I want to add a road. The road here goes from here, left to right, or from right to left. Well, what I will do is just extruding these vertices to y by 2, for example. And this too. But by minus 2. And here I will apply another texture. I will need to add another material. By the way, if you are using already existing material, you can select it from here. Like, add, add the new and select it from here, but we don't have anything else. Well, let's do the same, but add another texture, like grass. Do we have grass? For example, grass C. We, you can preview it here, but it will be previewed at, as blender materials. Or maybe it should be rock because, well, we don't have grass uh, that goes 25 meters high. <laughs> Let, let's just use rock. Yes, and uh, if we added a material, we should assign it to s certain faces. We can select faces, which I did, and assign. Now it's an it has another color. If the texture is from media rep, you don't have to copy it into a track folder, otherwise you have to. Yeah, by the way, uh, if you select a texture, if you see the NM suffix, that means it's a normal map for the texture without the suffix. And gloss suffix uh, means it's the gloss map for this texture, like, like this. Gloss maps and normal maps are, let's say, they are modifiers for how the texture looks like in game. It uh, gloss map, uh, well, normal map just uh, p makes the engine pretend that uh, the texture is not flat, and uh, t and tells the graphical engine how to how should the light go through this texture, or or, or whether it it shall bounce from this texture and uh, create a mirror effect or something like that. And the gloss map uh, controls well how metallic it looks, uh, how, met how metallic the material looks like, uh, how uh, well, and other parameters too, in including em emissiveness, glow, and stuff. Well, anyway, we don't care about that, and we don't care how the textures, uh, how the texture will look like. Let's just uh, leave the edit mode, and now the track it lo looks like this. Well, we see that there is some of road, and if we export it, it will also be present. Well, SDK seems to crash. Ah, well, because I edited the dive line. <laughs> Makes perfect sense. Well, but dive line obviously shouldn't include the off road. Let me just yes, and for dive line obviously we, we have to delete the off road where it is. Delete vertices. And here we will delete face. Okay. This is drive line. Obviously, it doesn't hit the fault. We can rota apply rotation scale, apply modifiers. Look at this thing where we need to merge vertices a bit, and look somewhere here where we want the start line to be. Well, I think at this point I won't modify the road anymore. Except maybe some subsurfing, which is subdivision surface modifier. Well, so dive line is kind of final. Maybe I will add another drive line, but it's another thing. Uh, dive line is incorrectly formed because what? Because I added to antennas, it complains that I don't have two antennas, but it's actually for the another reason, because I forgot to remove doubles. It removed 1200 vertices. Now it should be fine. 
and I need to start uh, SDK again. <laughs> well, basically, what I'm going to do is making a very simple tag. Well, it has some layout, not very simple, not circular, but it has some uh, elevation change, has some physics, has some objects, has some zippers, items, library nodes and stuff. Yes, uh, when recording those messages are kind of <laughs> annoying because they, like, if my tab wasn't here but was here, for example, it would be not visible. Well, now we have a fold. It's harder for the bots to drop, but at the same time the texture is looking very weird because, like, <laughs> For each face, the texture is stretched. And it repeats many times. At least I can go slightly off road. Ah, well, the line was fixed, so it's not a problem. But at least we can view how the faces look like. Well, and the tech ledger looks better than being perfectly white, but it has nothing. Well, the bots look like that. Yeah, I'm flying using the W key for for being close to object, closer to object, S to be further from the object, A and D to go left right, E and Q to go up and down. Well, texture looks bad, and this thing looks bad too, but we will have subdivision surface modifier. I mean, you shouldn't uh, use subdivision surface modifier, which I will use a bit later as an excuse to make something completely ridiculous. Maybe this is also completely ridiculous, actually. Yes, it, it is a com completely ridiculous, because, well, actually, if we if we are doing an elevation change like this, like the straights are almost flat and the, the curve is going down, it's kind of obvious to rotate the road uh, along the curve so that the outer side of the road is slightly higher. I guess. Or maybe not. Well, it looks fine anyway. I will hide the drive line. Maybe I will need to make it again. But I will look what I can do here. Ah, I hit some vertices. Well, I don't like this thing, which you can see too. It's, it's okay if we look from above. It's actually, it's not okay if we look from above. <laughs> Very strange. Well, probably because I should do it something like that, or maybe rotate. Yeah, if I rotate and do this, it's better, but not exactly. I rather subdivide this, like I will subdivide this, and I will subdivide this. Yeah, for such sharp turns, it's better to subdivide the curve sometimes. Okay, and now I will hide the rest of vertices and look only at them. Well, it doesn't look like really, really bad turn. But, I mean, uh, we can also modify some things in the curve, like there is weight. Weight means that if we increase the weight of the curve, then the track uh, that has curve modifier will be a bit wider. You can see it here. No? Ah, no, it's for radius. Well, I increased radius only in this point and the track is going wider. 
We don't need it here, but okay. Maybe we could actually do it. But actually, I don't know. Maybe I shouldn't even fix that because the uh, the points in question are on the off hold anyway. But well, I will fix it. Rather. There is also a tilt modifier which allows you to do this thing and this thing. Like this means that the road is tilted, at the, uh, is rotated at this point by thirteen point eight degrees to the left. Obviously, it needs to be applied to many points. How would I make this this passage slightly less rough? Well, <laughs> annotation didn't work. Well, I could make uh, the inner side here lower and here higher. Technically. And here, not change it at all. For example, I don't know, let, let me do it minus 3, minus 6. Actually, the way to do is to do it is change it, changing it in the, at the top. Maybe if I do minus 6 here. <laughs> here, minus 9. <laughs> well. Well, it's still bad, and uh, I think the problem is in the curve. We can just do something like... I don't know, let's just... Scale it down, and scale this down too. Scale this down... Ah, uh, no. Scaling this down is not good. Scaling up is also not good. <laughs> Maybe I can raise it a bit. And this I can lower a bit. Now it the turn kinda feels fine. Maybe not here. Well, it's a bit hard to do. We could actually move them somewhere here. Or this somewhere here, so that we don't have the whole the whole leverage change in the tone. This is probably kind of fine, right? Is it kind of fine? Uh, <laughs> well, apparently it's not. Maybe I should make it like this. And generally I should change heights anyway. Maybe I sh sh still should subdivide again.
and then I should do something like that. Like, not doing the elevation change in the top. Is it okay now? <laughs> mm, maybe it's okay, actually. I mean, I will still do subdivision surface modifier. Other, other, other curves, okay? Uh, no, <laughs> this one is not. I don't really want to fix all those dots, by the way. <laughs> this turn may also be broken. Yeah, by the way, to select not only the selection of vertices, but also its neighbors, you press Ctrl plus and Ctrl minus to do the opposite thing. Well, I don't know if Subsurf will do a good thing. It kinda looks bad. Well, maybe I need to do some tilt in the road. Like 3%, 6%, and 3. Well, it's a bit bad. But not as bad as before. And, and also some banking is okay. This turn could actually be even more tilted. Like uh, zero and the here it could be uh, minus ten. <laughs> here minus five. Well, and now the turn is even okay or not? I don't know. Well, this is kinda not okay. Well, I guess Subsurf will solve it, <laughs> anyway. I guess it's okay. I will need to make a dive line again. Well, and apparently I changed the curve so that the, the vertices that I need to merge are almost in the same place. <laughs> Which is cool, but... Okay, let's again do antennas. Okay, now it looks fine. I'm wondering about this curve too. Is it fine? Because from top it doesn't look fine. Okay. Ah, uh, no dive line fine beca because I forgot to do this. Oh no. 
problems with driveline detected. How weird. I already removed all doubles. I mean, I could read what they write, but... Check console for details. Driveline object has no attribute at endpoint. Very strange. Okay, let's change it. Let's look again what I... Oh, I needed to merge two pairs of vertices and not one. That's why it was a problem. Well, hopefully it's already a bit better. Well, I don't worry about this turns because they're relatively flat. Uh, uh, uh. Now the tone... Well, it looks kind of fine, even. I mean, the texture is not exactly helping. Well, from here, the last tone looks strange damn boss well there is a big jump which I I don't know what to do with I will need to make it again it's not hard <laughs> but maybe I should Subdivided here too. Here it's minus four, here it's minus ten, and if I do it minus eight, it's bad. Why? I don't understand anything anymore with the tilt. Maybe I should just move them a bit so that it's more smooth. Is it better now? Ah, uh, not exactly. Well, now it's a bit better. I will not change the drive line because it changes only in one place. I will go straight to the top. It, yeah, it looks strange from here, but okay. Well, it looks okay. Alright, I will change the drive line like that. Boom, boom, boom. Speedrun of making dive line. Here 
here I need to merge with this again. Well, I did it. Okay, it exported. I mean, the tag is the same, I won't change it. So I don't need to test it. What is this, by the way? It is timeline main, it, it is timeline main. Like, does it coincide with tech? Yes, it does. So it's fine. Okay. Let's go to the tech. Apply rotation scale. And well, apply modifiers. Now we have to remove doubles, of course. And also, we have to. Well, I had. Hide, hide the drive line. We'll have to handle these points. Because the faces are overlapping there. Okay, now it's fine. The problem is we need to fill the area somehow. Especially, but it will be here because there is elevation change. But okay, we can also do the following thing. Let me show statistics. Now it's current. The track is currently three k trees, three thousand and, and something triangles. If your track is more than one thousand, uh, one hundred k trees, it's already a signal that maybe you should lower your Poly count. Poly count is the number of polygons, number of trees in this case. Uh, the guide says somewhere that your track should not exceed uh, three three hundred three thousand uh, three hundred k trees because Cocoa Temple is something like that. Uh, I don't re remember where it's set. Ah well, in the notes. Well, it says that Cocoa Temple has 295k trees as an exceptionally large and complicated track. To be honest, uh, I never understood why it has so many trees in the first place. Trees, not trees. Not triangles. I don't know, I mean, some tracks by Blender Damus are... Uh, uh, they have poly count of one million trees, but they don't like. And at the same time, uh, it's possible to make a leggy track with a uh, smaller number of trees. Well, you can read the guide yourselves too, but I will concentrate on making the tag. Well, how to... how... what should I do? I promised to apply subdivision surface modifier, it looks like this. You find it here. And you can see that something changed. Without it, it's like that. With it, it's like that. The road kinda became more narrow, but at the same time the curves like this one are probably this turn w was less smooth before, I guess. Yes, 
so basically what subdivision surface does it increases the poly count like it was 3.6k now it's 14k which is more than acceptable by subdividing everything and making it more, more faces and edges but also it makes more smooth uh, it makes parts of the object more, more smooth and I'm going to use it the, the one problem however is that the sandy part of the road is shrinking I don't like that let's do something about that <coughs> the thing about uh, against it is called crease I will switch to solid mode I would like to select all these edges I mean of co uh, I can use control select to select everything on the shortest path like this it looks like well I entered the rendered mode it's a bit dark so you can see it better so if I select for example this vertex and I select control select this vertex it will take one of shortest paths and select everything the same goes for literally everything you can select all these edges like that and continue further them but I mean there are even better ways to select all edges that separate uh, off-road and the road itself we can select two edges that separate and uh, select and select and select, uh, select the edge loops and surprisingly as we had no alternative paths it selects all of this all of that and what we are going to do is pressing shift E and increase the so-called crease what it does to subdivision surface is that those edges are not touched if we increase crease to 1 for example let's go back to edit mode well the, cre uh, the edges with, high, uh, with maximum crease are selected with pink you can change it here I guess yes you can disable highlighting creases there are also other modifiers like seams but okay you can see that those edges are still selected let's just remove crease from them again shift E let's remove the crease you can see that while we remove it uh, well <laughs> let's not apply subdivision surface if we remove it almost completely Sub subsurf shrinks it well that's why we will increase crease to the maximum and now subdivision surface does nothing crease is like uh, I don't know the weight for edge which doesn't allow to modify it too much well it was like this and now it's like that it's it's slightly more smooth without and with we can make it level 2 to make it even more polygonal but I don't see the need in that let's just apply it here you can also let's switch back to solid you can see that the road and the off-road was divided by vertices too it's not like it's bad but if you don't need those vertices I, I don't really need those vertices but let's just le leave them as, 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 as they are but if you are, you are really exceeding some poly count like 14k is uh, rather okay 
but otherwise you could you can just select some vertices or again select edge loop and you could d dissolve edges and then as you can see some the edges between them disappeared and the vertices too well basically that's how you do it and now what we need to do is to fill the rest of area and basically well we could actually apply uh, increase the crease for edges before applying any modifiers and that would be even more optimal because that is applying something to one edge instead of many but it's kind of okay to do it right now too okay let's just do something we would like to fill all this how would we fill it? let's fill it with a big big face let's just select all those vertices well as they form a cycle we can just select edge loops and suddenly they are all selected and let's just make a face out of them by pressing F greatest face of all time that contains uh, 1220 <laughs> vertices well, we could do it, we could split it into several parts and handle that di di separately. You can see that even Blender cannot just handle its texturing. What we are going to do is splitting it into some triangles and quads so that it looks kind of smooth. Uh, Okay, I will delete this edge for now, uh, face for now. I will just show how, how to do it. For example, we want to fill like this area. And we want to split it somehow evenly into triangles and quads. What we can do is insert faces, which is done by pressing I. Let's let me just get rid of texture and use solid mode. We can use I, and then uh, for I for inserting faces, you need to specify the distance or just uh, or just move the mouse to s to set it. Basically, what it does, it uh, uh, just moves all the vertices by a specified distance and makes a face and connects uh, those vertices with the current ones obviously there will be uh, there could be artifacts like right now some vertices intersect very much some edges intersect very much and faces but what we are going to do well we'll set them some distance we know that uh, this distance is one and this distance is one so like by having an off road like that we already secured that uh, uh, the road has enough road that is r relatively smooth and now we, we can basically do anything we could just extrude by 10 and now and the road would still have the off road here and here would be some strange object but we won't do that We will insert faces, let's insert by two. And now to get rid of those overlapping vertices, we will try to merge by distance, this time by two. Or maybe by one and a half, so that we don't have too many triangles. And uh, then if there are some bad vertices still, we could merge them manually. You can also see that like here there are too many triangles and here it's very long quadrilateral. Probably it's not good. Let's just subdivide this edge. And we can specify how many edges there should be. You can see the thin white edge is 
it is one of the edges, it's probably okay to subdivide by 10 parts, which is subdivide with 9. Let's just do the same. Insert by 2, merge by 1.5, and, and we see the, there is a vertex here. I will just merge it with this one. And uh, if you merge vertices while selecting something, you can actually merge not only by center or at cursor or collapse, you can merge it first or at last. I selected first the bad vert vertex and the, the last the good vertex, so I will merge at last. Obviously you can you could also press F or L. So ML is merging at last, for example. And now I do I kinda do the can can do the same but uh why inserting by two if I can insert by more? Like let's Type 4 and merge by distance. I don't know. I usually use the same merge distance as in distance. Let's do it again. Okay, let me do it by 3. And merge also by 3. Do we have some bad vertices? Well, we don't. What we can also do is smooth, smooth uh, is making the vertices smooth. Like we can uh, open the vertex menu and do sm smooth vertices. They will be closer to their neighbors. That uh, you should keep that in mind. So, like uh, they will expand. Also, like you could not insert uh, faces here. You could just press Ctrl T as I did before and triangulate. For this face it's kind of fine, but uh, well, I usually ins insert faces when uh, it's not fine to split into such big triangles. Here it's probably fine, but I will insert anyway. Or you can uh, smooth vertices a bit later. I will insert by 4. Well, and there are many bad vertices. Sometimes uh, wireframe mode helps. I will just merge this. Mm. And there are only quads and trees. It looks very... St the texture looks very strange, but okay. Well, and actually such parts with uh, sharp thirds really need to be done this way. I will probably do this for this part and this part and this part and for the rest I will just do it together. Here it... Uh, well, and here too. Here it promises to be very bad because like this vertex has height 25 and this only 16. But let's do it anyway. I will speak a bit less. Let's take some edges that will not be very weird. Let's subdivide it somehow. Yeah, and you should notice that uh, if we do this thing, this inserting process for many complex faces standing near each other, th there are some <laughs> there are some patterns in how the vertices uh, lie near, near each other. It might be needed to adjust manually by, I don't know, smoothing vertices. <laughs> okay, anyway, we can just do this. Let's make it a face. I will switch to this mode be Z8 because it's darker. Unfortunately, I have to check the distance all the time. Mm. There are no bad words, but I will smooth them a bit. And actually, I could already triangulate it a bit, but it's a matter, it's a matter of taste. For example, I prefer s slightly more subdivided things, especially that we have 10 height here. So 
So I will subdivide by 2 only, right now. I mean insert. Yeah, you can get such things. There are no bad vertices, but you can notice there are such triangles. Such triangles are okay, but uh, sometimes this vertex can be right in, in between the, those two. So, so sometimes it's needed to... Sometimes you could need to adjust it somehow. We can see a strange thing, which I can triangulate immediately, but like... <laughs> it looks very weird. I can triangulate to this too. This I probably uh, I rather ins insert because if I triangulate the triangles are too big, but also they take some height. Inserting by three looks interesting, but I will do it by two anyway because there are there is not so much space. I will vo several times. Well, and apparently I can just relate the rest. And this is basically how you do, how you fill the spaces, except these verses are very weird. <laughs> Note that I I'm just doing with those vertices whatever I want because I already have a fold. Sometimes it's okay to not have a fold at some points, but also if you look at it, the solid uh, view kind of shades uh, in a non-smooth color the parts which are non-smooth, I should say. But the rest is kind of okay. Let's just continue and then improve it somehow. It's very nice to subdivide when you see the vertices. Yeah, sometimes when you have a face and you want to insert it, sometimes there are parts of face which can be which are better to triangulate. I mean, it's really high poly compared to some other texts. <laughs> I usually, uh, when I need to fill some really big areas, I rather go by exponent, like in setting by one, then by one, then by two, four, eight, and so on. Maximum distance is, I guess, 50. 50 meters for inserting, oh, or rather not, for inserting it's it's not 50 but but bigger, but for version by distance, the maximum distance is 50, but uh, you can bypass it by scaling. <laughs> well, we have bad vertex here. Maybe I will merge all of them. No, I don't want to. Well, I don't really want to merge actually. <laughs> I will just smooth them. If you smooth vertices, you can try to merge them by distance again if you really want it. Well... We can smoothen them a bit. I'm using shortest path so that it selects faster. Well, it looks a bit better now, but it can be smooth. Smooth. It's not that hard if you have a simple track. We can also like 
make it not a single edge but a few of them. Yeah, by the way, if you extrude and press the right button, it's, it still extrudes. So sometimes it's better to press the escape, the control Z. Yeah, and of course I need, want to subdivide. To <laughs> well, I didn't... Yeah, there is some <laughs> special effect. If you subdivide two edges in a face, they also subdivide the face. <laughs> Sometimes it's useful, sometimes it's not. I will have to create face from scratch. I2, M, select distance 2, probably VO. And again. A reminder that I can press 3 to switch to face selection, face mode. Well, 4 is probably enough. Well, and we got something that is not really bad, apart from this vertex being too high, but that's my fault because I exuded it from this. But probably it's okay. Well, and uh, actually I can just move it down, like I can select it, use O button for proportional editing and like I can make it go down well with small radius nothing happens but if I increase the radius with mouse wheel it will do something about that it's still at height 8 <laughs> I don't know it sounds pretty bad <laughs> looks pretty bad. Okay. Anyway, I can smooth it later. You can see that if the face is really irregular, has really irregular shape, the texture may be like anything. <laughs> now this is kind of bad. Triangulation is still bad here. Well, <laughs> I don't think it's really better. Well, it's a relatively flat thing anyway, so it's fine. Texture is still bad, but I mean, it can be fixed easily. <laughs> Actually, you can select more than tw 10, but if you select 15, for example, you still can do it. But then you cannot go f mod for more than 20. I guess it... Oh well, <laughs> for 23 it goes even further. But I don't need so much. It's okay like, no like that. Number of polygons is slowly going.
Well, here I don't see anything bad yet. I will use 4 immediately instead of 3, because it's big. And also, if you just press Ctrl plus, it produces something good. Well, it, it is kinda not smooth, but just because of the original elevation change. You can also smooth this thing, because we just... we made two things. I mean, obviously the density here and here are incomparable, but that's fine. Well, and we already have something. Okay, this vertex should be a bit below, but we'll fix a bit later. Okay, I actually did a bad job because <laughs> this angle is pretty bad. But okay, I will do it separately. Oops. It accidentally... Ah, well, it's okay. It just uses another distance. And there are too many bad vertices. I will merge at last. Oh, oops. I merged the, merged the wrong thing. Oops, I did it wrongly. <laughs> well, and there are some overlapping faces, which means I need to merge them too. It could be done better, but... And apparently triangulation is okay. <laughs> I will smooth everything later. We can do something like uh, this. We can actually subdivide twice. <laughs> yeah, the shortest path is going from the last selected vertex. I see nothing bad, honestly. Well, I feel like something is on, because what is this face? Ah, it's not a... <laughs> it's not a five-sided polygon. It, things are just not smooth, that's the problem. I will not smooth smoothen the off-road vertices deliberately. Well, but already it seems like a good shape, even though I can smooth it. Let's just do it for the whole part, especially that we have a subdivided thing. Yeah, you can see that this uh, near this edge, near this part, everything is subdivided very in a very um, detailed way, and here it's not. But it's not. It's not like it's a problem. <laughs> yeah, 
I don't see bad words, just to be honest. And now, well, the bad words disappear because we could already extract some triangles from the face. Yeah, and you can see that this edge is kind of outstanding compared to its neighbors. Well, and it's visible, this edge is visible, but still it's kind of fine. Now, obviously, we need to do some uh, the same thing on the outside, but for that we can just extrude some vertices. Oops. And pretend that there are faces outside. Now we can delete those faces, or we can not delete those. It doesn't really matter. Well, you can see the, the number of vertices near the... such edges is too big. But, alright. Also, well, you can see that uh, I usually subdivide the edges, and this one is not an exception. Maybe I shouldn't have done it. Well, okay. The problem is I don't want to subdivide these edges, but these are already very subdivided, let's say. And if I don't subdivide uh, the outer edge, well, it will have a bad structure, like... <laughs> for example, if I did something like this, and made an edge, and did something like this, something like this, For example, insert many times by 2 and merged by 2, 2. I would have something like this, which is kinda not good. First of all, because, well, not because there are too many vertices here, but because there are too few there. The number of vertices here being excessive is fixed by different distance of, of inserting, but, well. <laughs> It can be solved, but the, I, I will just subdivide the outer edge once every time.
I will split into some regions. Well, you need to be careful when selecting the shortest path. Uh, well, for example, because of that. <laughs> okay, I will have. Okay, one more edge. Well, I have four faces to <laughs> to do something with, and then I can just I don't know extend the, that small polygon with outside vertices somehow. Actually, I can insert them at the same time. <laughs> Except that they have different height. meters? Do I have some artifacts? I think I don't. Well, that's great. I don't think I will smooth. No. I also will subdivide it by two. I will not really care about uh, the outer edges being weird. I can fix them. In fact, I will even delete the original vertices because I don't care about them. Well, I have one artifact here. Maybe it's not called like that. <laughs> I just don't have a word. Again, I'll, I'll delete all the vertices here. I don't think something bad happened. Well, and here I could even select this and 
I by the way I forgot to I forgot to subdivide edges but it doesn't really matter. Like let me just S X S Y like okay. The main main goal is to fill the holes outside. And eventually they will be filled. Mm, I still see nothing bad around the tech. It's already 21k triangles, but it was 14. I think filling at that cost is pretty nice. <laughs> Well, and here we have artifacts. In one place, but that's not a problem. Watch this. I mean, doesn't really what. No, it said it to merge them at Kusu. <laughs> For some reason. Well, I don't see it's anything bad, to be honest. Except well, I think it. I I can already stop inserting anything because it's more or less convex now. Not really convex, but this is much more circular thing than the track it's the track itself. <laughs> Like, obviously I can do it again, but I can fix it. I can take those triangles. I didn't even smooth anything, to be honest. I just extruded everything. <laughs> well, I will move it somewhere and do and shrink a bit. Well, maybe fifteen. Well, obviously I don't like those edges. These ones. <laughs> I will just insert. Oh no. Well, I will do something like this. I will make an edge here too.
Well, generally, it's um, the surface is almost done. In fact, it could be one face, but I cannot just make a face by selecting two sets of <sighs> vertices. Okay. Maybe I can just collapse those edges. Like dissolve. No, I cannot. <laughs> Too bad. Yeah, I will subdivide those faces. Let's just do like do a bold move and jump to thirty immediately from fifteen. Yeah, the fact that it's not visible is because uh, the focal, uh, the clip star, clip end is one kilometer in blend. I will set it to ten kilometers <laughs> so that I can view the objects further than ten kilometers, obviously. Now there are bad vertices, but we are not scared of them. This is probably one. Can we just triangulate them? Yes, we can. Now we got some surface. We could add some rivers and stuff, but I, I'm not going to do it. Proportional editing. I will just make them a bit more smooth. And generally, like uh, for those vertices, oops. I don't think uh, there is a need to have many of them. I will just merge by distance uh, 45. Well, maybe it wasn't a good idea. Anyway. When I subdivided edges, it was quite pretty bad. I will select all faces with the material, which is not sent, so by selecting an edge and shift G material, it's like similar uh, faces or objects by material, a, a similar area or greater area, and such kind of things. And I will triangulate them, and then I will Detriangulate them, uniting some trees into quads with angles 70%. It still it doesn't change the number of trees, but can do something more pretty. Oh no, what is this? Well, this needs to be smoothed at least. Yes, but obviously that is not the only way of smoothing. Uh, let me just take the outer radius, let's see.
and expand it somehow. Uh. Now it's totally big because the distance is like four kilometers here. <laughs> well, the problem is it's not enough smooth. And also, well, I mean, the layout is fine. The texture is not fine. Let's learn how to do texturing. That is pretty simple if you don't have to do anything uh, complicated. For this case it's not complicated. Let's select that just everything with this material. It will select everything but the rope. Let's press U and press U again to unwrap. Well, we see that turned into some big texture. We can select here UV editor and uh, select everything and we see that all those edges are painted like this. We can actually scale it if we scale it in this window in a bigger way the texture will be smaller. It may seem like repetitive, but it's the very outer radius. It's not repetitive at all. We can increase even more. Another thing is like the texture is not consistent between this part of the tech and this part of the tech, as you can see. That is a problem. Like, you can see that it changes really differently. <laughs> I mean, for now it's fine, but I will texture a bit later, because now I will try to, well, first of all, test the tech. Well, we have a good uh, physical shape for it already. Well, it somehow reminds me of the island because the road is uh, white and there is rock on the left. Yes, but uh, well, and now there is uh, some kind of walk, walk to the to walk upwards and still upwards and upwards. I didn't uh, even intend to beat the, na the track with nature, but it looks kind of cool like that, I guess. Well, and that's all for this track. You can go here. Whoa. Some parts are not smooth, but I mean. Maybe it's okay like that. You can see some parts are really not smooth here. Well, it's not visible because of texture. And you can see that the sun is kind of... Uh, the sunlight is kind of not flat for this texture. Because it already has normal map and gloss map, probably. It's a good choice. From top, uh, the tech looks like the same as before. <laughs> In reverse, it's, it probably looks the same. Let's violate all the laws and uh, go in reverse. Please don't do that when you're not alone. Unless you are playing FFA with someone else while racing. Oh no, they are again here. Well, 
considering you can go out of the track uh, for the rock and the rock doesn't slow down you it the track seems kinda easy but it's actually not because I will apply slow down uh, you can actually do it in the following way go to materials material properties you can go to ma this material I will rename it it will be stone I'm not sure I just uh, I just uh, picked two random textures and suddenly they're looking good I don't know why <laughs> Maybe I will leave them like that because I didn't have an idea for the tag. Let's call it hold because we c we can ha we can have other type of scent. Well, you can select the stone and Antarctica Super Tux card properties and select. Well, it already has shade, but we can select uh, enable slow down without N. Here we have two parameters after how much time we apply it and uh, uh, by how much it changes the speed. One second it can be sometimes too much. I will enable it after 0 0.5 and the uh, maximum speed will be increased by 0 0.85. Maybe that's enough. But let's talk about other thing scul uh, called sculpt mode. Sculpt mode is basic can basically replace. Well, usually when you press tab, you switch between object mode and uh, edit mode. You can select sculpt mode, and then it will switch with edit mode. What is sculpt mode? It's basically when you have many operations on the left, which you can do. Let's switch to solid. You. Basically, they are uh, deforming the surface. For example, I can do this operation, draw, and uh, it will increase the height, like move everything along the normal. Obviously, I don't want to do that right now. Or draw sharp, which which will do the opposite thing, kind of. Obviously, I don't want to touch the road. Well, you, you could see it interacts with edit mode. Well, I I don't want to touch the road. What to do? Th there is some such thing as mask, and th there are such things as face sets. Uh, sculpt mode work, uh, works with face sets, and uh, you can set the mask probably to some separate fa face and vertices but it's easier to do for face sets. Let's create some face sets. For example, I will change back to texture. I will select well, I will select all the vertices and make them well and switch to sculpt mode and make a face set from them. Face set from edit mode selection. Well and now it is green for some reason. Actually because it's because uh, well, the sculpt mode can show face sets and it does it with the color. If we show switch to solid, it is green. Green face set, let's see. But also, if uh, there is a mask, it uh, paints it with in a darker way, let's say. And the mask is just, uh, uh, let's say the prohibition of uh, changing anything and so I will just make a face set a separate face set for the road itself mm, and probably for its off-road happily for that I only need to do control plus plus let's just make a face set out of this well, and it's now not green, but uh, purple. It's easier to s use sculpt mode with solid, if you don't need textures. And so you see that there are two face sets, one green and one purple. 
and also let's uh, well you know that you can hide objects objects with H and uh, unhide with alt H well in sculpt mode you just use H for both but uh, here you just either show all face sets or select one let's select this one the road so what is what is selected is under the the cursor and tell it to fill mask it it is instantly darker than before we can adjust it in the settings and it means we cannot modify it we can press h again and now we see that we cannot modify anything that is related to those vertices even though if we change to texture view <laughs> Some part of stony of road is also forbidden. Like if we try to do something, we can do well. If we try to do something, let's do it with more strength. We cannot do it with vertices that are masked. Well, we can do it near them, but not them. Well. And there is such a tool called Smooth, which we will use right now. It's not always useful, but sometimes it is. I will just smooth all the, those things. And it became much smoother. Obviously, uh, the mm, faces right near the road are not really smoother now well obviously we can remove this thing smooth vertices uh, basically works with only vertices and its neighbors and this thing works just for surface Obviously, it's not really recommended to use it like I just did, because the faces could be very small. But I guess all right. We had the face here. We can smooth it out, and now there is no face visible. Great. Well, apart from the texture also hiding things, well, this is ne needed to be smooth. Yes, but we can not only smooth, but unsmooth in some way. We can make it make more hills from it. Obviously, we need some camera fixation. Well, and also, like, I want to make a hill somewhere here, like so that uh, if you go from here to the left it it's not just the land going down let's just do something i'm i'm not really familiar with many tools i will smoothen it obviously Well, we were smoothing the irregularities of kind of smooth surface, but now I will smooth the surface I just did, which looks terrible, but okay. <laughs> Especially I need to smooth it near the borders of the track. Maybe I used two stone brush. Well, probably. It had no effect after all.
obviously we can we can subdivide some faces if we don't like them. Well, maybe it's fine, but we can also add some mountains or hills outside the tank. It is not really high. I can do it. Well, it's not so much subdivided there, so I rather smooth it back. Maybe I need to add more mountains here. Now I need to spot a bit. I obviously try to not hit the road, but uh, it won't be hit anyway. Just I don't want to change something too closely to the to the track. Maybe this does something useful. <laughs> ah! That was scary! <laughs> like, what did it do? <laughs> oh wow. Anyway, I rather won't want a uh, mountain right here. Oh god. Well, there are other things, but they are not really... not really good for all the purposes here. You can notice that radius is constant, unless you change it. And uh, that means you need to zoom in to do something more detailed, which makes perfect sense, I guess. Probably the brush is too strong. Well, it's kind of fine. Let's try it. Obviously, to return to object mode, you need to select object mode. But, I mean, there are no objects yet. No items. Well, there should be a slowdown, but it's kind of s small. Well, it shouldn't be possible, obviously. The slowdown clearly should be much more immediate. Obviously I'm using zippers, but it doesn't mean slowdown is okay. 
it's after half a second anyway, let it be 0 0.6 Well, you can see that if you go here, you slow down. It, uh, so going out uh, could be only justified by like... Well, I don't know. Actually, I think uh, it's a bit too harsh uh, for going out for a while, but uh, a bit too soft for going out very much. So maybe I will just apply a different slowdown for the immediate of old. Like I don't know. You go out. Just for touching the fold it's too harsh, but for going out well <laughs> maybe it's not too much. Well, if only you could be hitting the wall. Yeah. Well, there should be some objects which uh, I kinda need to create. Maybe I should sculpt mode again. Like, what prevents me from making it? much more inflated here I guess nothing <laughs> I mean, it might look ugly that I increased the height so much, but when I smooth it, smoothen it out, it will be not much, I guess. Yeah, the text seems kind of small. I like big text, but okay. <laughs> Probably it's fine right now. Yeah, probably I should... I mean... <laughs> I could take some texture that is... Uh, a transition between the center road and this. And, but also, okay, let's do something. And texture the center out. Well, how do we do it? Well, all the small parts of the track are textured like this. We probably would like to Uh, shrink it by X so that it's kind of 
the same. So like, I, I mean, this narrow part, this narrow part of the road, between this and this, should correspond only for only to a certain part of certain part of x coordinates here. So it makes sense to shrink it by x. But the problem is now that everything is corresponding to the same x. For that, there is a solution. We can just say, okay, uh, this part of track should be just textured separately, and we will like. We don't need to rotate it because we want this part to be textured separately, but here let's just select everything here and then we will use a magic thing called uh, follow active quads. So basically you will take the last active quad which is white and it is already textured and the rest of them will just uh, will be unwrapped here according to their connections to this face. You can choose different methods like length average even or something. I will choose probably even because they are all they all have roughly the same length. Well, now we have something that is more or less like a road. I'm not sure about the toes. Well, it follows the road, which is great. I'm not sure if I should scale it. It's probably fine. But then there is off-road, which I want to have some other texture. Well, I have I can use edge, edge loops and rings, I guess. And uh, select edge loops. Or rather, I should select this edge, this edge, and uh, then select all the edges that are in the same loop. And then select Ctrl plus. And now I selected all the off-road and only it. And I will probably make another material for it. I don't know, maybe gas. <laughs> there should be a texture that that has a transition between sand and something. I don't really know. Let it be anything. Let it be snow for now. <laughs> Now the off-road is white, <laughs> and also I can do the same trick, but uh, I mean... I can make... well, I need all these edges. I want this and this and this and this face be textured exactly like this road, but hmm. I don't know. Maybe it should be the stone texture instead. Well, 
well it corresponds to stone texture so like I can duplicate the stone texture in the folder and uh, just set the different slowdown slowdown for a fold I guess that's the way Well, I will do it. Well, we have two folders for the track. One of, one is in media repo and another is in assets. In the media repo we need to select tracks and a uh, simple track. And here we need to select tracks. And also simple tracks. I'm not sure why I don't see it. Simple track. Ah. Ah, it's simple track 09 for some reason. <laughs> okay. I actually need the texture for Mystic Media Rep, which is. the stone texture but I will change it slightly bedrock A ok this one I will open GIMP And edit this texture somehow. Uh, well, <laughs> but then I will select it here. Mm, textures generic. Bedrock. Was it bedrock? Ah, yes. Okay. Now I will copy it. And uh, I don't know. Maybe I should some do something like. I should open the send texture too, which is uh, send out a. Mm -hmm. Let's paste it as a layer. Well, actually, actually, uh, I never did it, but I guess it should be possible to combine two materials. Let's find it. I thought it was quite easy to combine two textures apart from the curls. Mm, maybe it's in texture. Well, they describe how to do it. Let me read it.
I don't know, I don't feel like doing it right now. <laughs> anyway, we can just uh, take some other texture like... Uh, there should be a track border anyway. Maybe racing pattern is the way? No. <laughs> Instead, I forgot how the texture is called that is for curves. This is needed for curves. find the texture. I mean, the only thing I want is that off-road is different from stone, because I need it to be another material, and materials cannot have the same textures, and I don't want it to be, like, the same texture. Mm, but maybe it's okay, actually, <laughs> to be the same texture. It will look more fancy than uh, when it's another texture. Oh, maybe border blue bit pink gray, something like that. Well. Borde pink eye. Well, I need to texture it, obviously. Let's just uh, select it here. Well, let's select these two. These two faces according to this one. And the same for the other side of the road. Not even, but length average, let's say. Well, and now the road didn't really change. Let me select only one side of the road. Well, I wanted to select uh, edge loops and then control plus. I want to hide this. Even. Okay. Now they are a straight line, which is good. It was this thing. Now I will hide the upper part of the off-road and uh, do the same thing for this thing. Uh, well, now I will unhide them all. Well, and you can see that they are vertical. I need to rotate them here. Yes. Now the texture is kind of complete. I can make another slow down. Let it be. Zero point two because the off-road is quite narrow, and it will be zero ninety-five, zero nine. And for this, and for the stone, it will be 
uh, 0 0.5 well that's tight well actually it's is it okay to have some texture like that I probably should slightly scale it as x to which way to this way probably by 2 yes and probably I should well I should select all of these vertices and move them somehow up. Well, something like that. <laughs> well, it means, well, N works also here. It means that we need to raise it up by 1553 and I, I want this to be 0 so I will raise it again well now it's perfect almost Except that they are not really horizontal. But I guess it's fine. And also for this thing I want to do the same. I want to have these things near the, ro uh, near the edge of the road. Probably I should even I don't know. Selecting that all is quite long. Well, I'm just a bit slow, let's say. Otherwise, the problem is not a problem. Now we have fought with these things, except uh, they are not completely symmetrical. Like this line doesn't correspond to this line, and the colors don't correspond to. Where is the dive line actually? Well, the starting line is here, so let's align it with starting line. Kind of. <laughs> I 
anyway. Well, the red is up to the line and something like that, yes. I hope it also has the same color everywhere here. Well, kind of yes. Well, great. Let's see how it looks like. see that with on the off road it slow down, slow, slows down a bit and here it slows down very much even with zippers I barely reach the speed Looks like a nice track, but uh, <laughs> if only I could put very many <laughs> library objects. Well, and also you can go off the track, which is kind of bad. Like, of course, I could we can put here some invisible walls. But I mean, it generally looks a bit empty. Well, GIMP is not needed. What else I can put here? I can put items, I can put check lines, I can put something, but... I don't really know. <laughs> I could also discuss some alternative drive lines. But I guess on this track it's hard to create one if I already made the whole road and the whole elevation change. Maybe the pit, I don't know. It, it, it looks nice, but it looks empty at the same time. <laughs> That's what I can say. Maybe I can just add some palm trees or something. Well, anyway, let's just add items. Let's create some collection for items. And collection for chick uh, lines. I don't know. I mean, I should add invisible walls, like here, but I mean it would be better if it's blocked by something. I don't really remember which library objects are suitable for that, maybe some fence. Well, actually, how to import library object, well, it's very easy. You can just uh, link, then open the media repo, library, and then you can take anything from this, any any folder, but then you need to go into the blend and then object and um, select the amine. Then somewhere there is a theme. Here it's a computer, it says. 
The problem is you need to do object relations uh, make proxy so that you can use it. And then the proxy is actually movable. I don't know where it is now. <laughs> Maybe I can put it under the 3D console. Well, it is technically a computer. Let's rotate it a bit and uh, make another one. You should use Alt D to duplicate linked so that uh, if you edit one object, the other one is also edited. But here it's a slightly different purpose for that because we cannot edit it because it's a library node. But we can do something else. Let's try to export those computers. <laughs> Are there computers? Well, I don't really see them. Maybe they're behind. something bad. Very strange. Well, so apparently there was a problem with uh, showing some library nodes. The problem was that uh, uh, they were exported badly in CNXML. Like if I link the computer again, for example, like that, I will make a proxy of it. I will move the proxy to cursor. Okay. It exists, right? The problem is, if I export it, it should it should it should be there, right? Uh, but uh, if I open the CNXML for the, for the stack, there is an extra zero, and uh, it doesn't really read the values it needs to. Well, I will leave it as it is, but in the game it's not visible. Like there is no PC at all. That is because of that extra zero, which only occurs when when there are no check lines at all. If I fix this, it apparently should appear. Well, yes, here it is. It looks great. And it has fun. Well, the problem is... Uh, it kind of means that I need to make the check lines first, and be before making check lines, uh, check lines, I should probably uh, add some walls or something. And also to make it look uh, less empty, it's probably it would be probably good if I put some water in here. So I will go to sculpt mode anyway. and make some adjustments here. I will make some holes. Maybe with a bigger force. I just wanted this uh, part to be lower than the road so that I can pretend there is some water here. Well, it looks like... well... 
it needs to be smoothed, obviously. Maybe I should do it even, make it even bigger. Anyway. It's a kind of... It's just the change of elevation, like this, but I will also add water. Water is added very simply. I mean, I will add some plane, which would have the material of water. Let's ju just take some water from the SDK media repo. It should be like in the water folder. Let's say it's jungle water, for example. Right. Obviously, it should be some uh, something transparent. We will pick not the default PBR solid uh, shader. We will pick alpha C2. But the main part is uh, like determine where the water will be. For that, I will just scale the plane very much. Move it somewhere else for a while, and say that okay. The cursor is now at hei this height. Let's just put it into some other height. For example, at uh, minus twelve. Well, minus twelve is too much. Cursor is probably too high. Ah, mine's still like th this, obviously. Okay. We can now just go here and, uh, well, this all will be filled with water. Like, th this will be the water surface. At the same time, we need to, like, remove it from here. Probably. Or maybe we will just We can just shrink the plane like this. I will subdivide the, the edge. Okay, so we kind of have water now. Right. <laughs> Probably I should. Uh, sculpt a bit more so that there are higher mountains here. Not mountains, but hills. I mean, it's rock anyway. Probably the rocks should surround the track anyway. Now let's smooth it from the outside, from the inside, and somewhere in the middle. Like, uh, okay. Maybe somewhere here too. Well, okay. Alright. Now we already have water. Great. I could actually make something here in the water too. If I lower the, the vertex. Well, it's at minus 12. Maybe I can lower this thing. Like, why not? <laughs> A 
obviously I need to smooth smoothen it something like that but it only increases the area in some some parts and probably the water should rescue anyway Well, the problem is also that the plane is kind of small. <laughs> it should be like that. Oops. It should it shouldn't be perspective. <laughs> well, now it's okay. Let's call it what a surface. Uh, we need to rescue the play. Something like that. Actually, water has some other shader. I forgot its name for now. But I mean, it's only needed for visuals. Well, it kind of doesn't look like water. I should add the water, bo the water bottom anyway. At least it looks l something like some something like ca a canyon. The rocks are somewhat polygonal, but I guess it's okay. Well, already some landscape, you know. Let's add some more mountains, maybe. Well, this part is kind of higher than this one. What prevents us from making more mountains? I don't know. Probably nothing. a bit better now. Well, it's probably good. Okay. We have water. We need check lines. And we need some track limits because, okay, of course, uh, if we just had a straight line going left and right would be just slow, but we have turns and we need some objects, but uh, we need some check lines too. Let's just add some of them. Let's make a collection, just to make it structured. Check lines. Check lines are just edges as a uh, separate object. The thing about check lines is that, uh, well, you need to understand how they work. They work very simply. Uh, well, if you have a track, you can put check lines. Check lines are basically lines, and uh, you 
your card is uh, crossing it if it is touching something between check line and uh, the same check line raised by 5 meters or something. Maybe 6, uh, then it's between check line. Uh, well, maybe 6. But uh, the problem is uh, not putting check line is bad and not putting visible wall at the same time. Uh, because, uh, well, because people can go anywhere. Check lines are only needed, to, uh, are the mechanism used by STK to count a lap, and the lap is counted if uh, the check lines or groups of check lines uh, are touched by the card in the order. Like, if there is, if there is the first check line. Well, usually, usually all check lines are in their own groups, but sometimes there are exceptions when there are alternative paths. Well, and uh, to make lap counted, uh, the card should be at the start of the, uh, of the lap, then touch one of first uh, one of check lines in the first group, then one of check lines in the second group, and and so on. Check lines should be put in this in the way in such a way that uh, it's or impossible, or possible, but only with intentional cuts, uh, to to complete a lap uh, without uh, driving for the whole lap. Some small cuts are acceptable, like uh, you can cut the curb uh, on the in the corner, but not big exploits. So that's why check lines should be put in the places which you cannot avoid, uh, which you cannot avoid if uh, you are uh, racing the track correctly. Like obviously you cannot avoid some, uh, something like this. I mean, in this track it's a bit more easy because you can put them anywhere. The only problem is uh, for check lines is usually well. The problem for check lines is, first of all, uh, they should uh, uh, count the laps for all people who do the, laps, the lap correctly, and secondly, they should uh, prevent people from unintended cuts. Well, preventing from un unintended cuts uh, could be with some rescue walls, invisible walls, and some and slowdowns which could make the cuts uh, more slow and and thus not really suitable but the problems start when check lines are made badly uh, badly in such a way that someone can miss it so there are some rules to put it, uh, uh, there are some rules how to put check lines basically if you have a road somewhere no matter uh, whether it's a, a, a turn or not, or a straight, if you put a check line, you should you should put a check line in such a way that that uh, it's impossible to miss. Like for example, if uh, if if there is a barrier here, I will draw it in uh, curly line, and if the barrier is here, you can put check lines. You cannot put check lines like this because then someone technically can can be pushed. Imagine if this is the road and if this is a barrier. You cannot put check line like this because then someone can just well I will erase it. Someone can just be, uh, go here and go here and skip a check line and his lap will not be counted. You may ask, uh, but he doesn't win any time? Yes, he doesn't win any time and uh, if uh, that person intended to make a cut, he obviously failed because it is slower than just going on the road. But the problem is the cards can be pushed by other cards and what if uh, the card is pushed there? So basically, if uh, there are clear t track limits, 
not the track limits, but if there are clear limits of the rideable zone, the check line should be extended beyond them. Well, and ob obviously it should cover the road. <laughs> uh, but uh, of course check line cannot extend much more because then someone can just cut like this in some cases just comple uh, completely bypassing the road but still crossing the check line that is also a, a bad thing so preferably if uh, uh, the, uh, the preferable situation is when uh, there are clear limits of rideable zone which is modern attack like all of road is also rideable zone it should be preferably delimited by some non-bypassable gates or walls preferably visible walls of course and then uh, the preferable location of the check line is uh, to start and end directly in this walls like starting here and ending here is fine well, and uh, the other problem is uh, related to the fact that uh, check lines have only 5 or 6 meters in height. That is a big problem actually, because if you look, for example, at this track in particular, I didn't make it intentionally like that, I just like... Uh, elevation change, but if you look at this particular track, you can see that there are elevation changes and uh, for example uh, you can accidentally go off this I mean, for example, I put the check line here it's uh, 5 meters high and then, uh, for example, I want someone uh, I want cars to be able to cut this part no, I mean, if the check line is here, for example, oh, it doesn't want to do properly, anyway, let's do it again. For example, I want to put the check line here, and allow people to cut this part, and someone can go here, cut this part, and uh, jump there, crossing the check line, but uh, the cut might be too high. It's not a really good example, but uh, especially <laughs> the, the, um, the, uh, the height of check lines are, is especially annoying when there are tracks with bankings like this, where you can just, well, you can see that this part is higher than this part, and if you go from this part to this part, for example, in reverse, you can go uh, on the inside line, go to the outside, and suddenly you, you can go upwards. I mean, not because of the wall, but just because of the elevation change on the road itself. So, like, <laughs> check lines should obviously cut... Uh, uh, check lines should... Uh, obviously should cover the whole zone where the players can go and uh, if it is 3D they should cover the 3D zone but uh, the, the problem with that is that uh, check lines are only 5 meters high so sometimes you need to stack many check lines like put here, put it here in the same place but high obviously they should overlap a bit just in case Well, and uh, so I should place check lines, but at the same time I should delimit the, uh, the track limit somewhere, and also I should put as many check lines as possible. Probably I will put some object here, and then, uh, well, so that people don't cut any 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 of that. And then I can put the barrier here too and uh, then I can put check line here let's just do it well it, it is a plane not a check line but I can delete these two vertices well and uh, 
I will move them. Wait, what? 10 meters to the left, so that the, sen uh, they, the line passes to the center. And also I will use something to... I will use snap into face, so that... so that uh, I can just put the vertex exactly on the surface. And this too. Well, somewhat like that. I mean, I haven't put barriers yet because I want to use uh, barriers from the library, and uh, to use library objects, I need some check lines. First of all. Well, this is one check line. Another check line should be somewhere like probably here. You can toggle the snapping with the shift tab, by the way. Somewhere like here, I will rotate it. You can rotate your clients, I guess. Well, I need it. Snap. Well, it doesn't want to snap for some reason. Ah, well. <laughs> well, now it works. Well, now this check line is okay. The other check line should be also okay. I mean, when you snap to face, uh, make, just make sure that the road is not below the check line. <laughs> but that can be done with artist debug mode anyway. Then, I don't know, probably... I don't know, maybe I should sculpt mode here also. I will just put as much as many check lines as possible, I think. Well, I mean, I can put them here, so that I put barriers in the tone. Makes sense. In the sharp tone. The same here. Maybe like this. Then I will put it here, just in case, so that... I obviously will put check lines here, here, and here. In the chicanes. <laughs> I will not put it so far away. I will rather extend it. I mean, it's probably better to uh, for me to just make rectangles of height 5. To show in Blender how it looks like. Well, probably it's enough. Now I need to specify that they are all check lines. To do that, we need uh, well, letter K for check line. I will first select for everything that it's check line, so that the menu opens for every object. Uh, well, the first check line should activate. The, well. We need to write the name of its group here. Let's uh, call it Ch Chuva. H 
happily the stack is nothing complicated. And for the last check line we need to well it's still check eight, but we need to, to activate lab because it's the last check line, it should activate the start of the dive line. And the dive line should activate uh, the first check line. And the first check line should activate the second check line, obviously. By the way, there is uh, this menu, which you shouldn't use because it works incorrectly. You need to just paste Q3 and not the object. Otherwise, I think it crashes. N not crashes, but it explodes strongly. The more check lines, the better, but uh, I mean, obviously, there is some limit. <laughs> Well, the, those are the check lines. And how to preview them? You need to open SDK. Well, I will close it. If you have artist debug mode enabled, you can just pass check debug, which will show you the check lines. Disable add on cards is not necessarily. Not, not, not necessarily. Disable add on cards is not necessary for that, of course. I'm sorry, I'm <laughs> speaking. Not clearly already. Well, the, uh, the tag is exported. And we can see the check lines. Well, there are no check lines on the state. But you can see the check lines as those rectangles. I will probably put it a bit below and if you cross it it's it becomes white the red check line means that it's the next the next check line you need to cross and the white is just a check line obviously they work would be strange if they didn't it's a good practice if if the check line doesn't uh, uh, is not overly above the track. Well, here it is above the track, and it is bad because I cannot cross it. There is no way for me to cross it other than try to do something like that. This is this is obviously a bad placement, and this is even worse placement. I can bypass it for sure, but I mean. I will handle by bypassing a bit later. That's why I'm first, because all the other cards successfully skip the check lines. I will probably even stack some check lines a bit later. But now we can add some library objects. Well, and uh, the first library object I want to add is some barrier. I don't remember where it's located. Probably STK lib barrier. There is nothing. What do you mean? Okay. <laughs> Well, I need Tyus Barrier anyway. Well, obviously it should be in some other collection. Let it be objects. Well, and if you select the collection, all new objects will be added to this collection by default. That's why I selected it right now. I need to make proxy. It decided to not do it, not to not click. Well, and now I can move proxy anywhere. For example, here. Well, it didn't move for some reason. 
it looks like that, but it's actually white on the... Ah, I probably moved the cursor instead, unfortunately. Something like that. Yeah, and it will be pretty nice, but I probably need to scale it. Uh, I will use Alt D because the proxy is linked to the library object and I want to preserve the linking. I mean the slow the, the off road is already slowing down. But just in case. Obviously we need some tech limits. The only thing is that you cannot edit library objects. Well, you see that this uh, set of tiles is kind of floating in the sky. What I can do to snap it to ground? I can, well, I can enable snapping, but at the same time, well, it should be the center which is snapped. Uh, and at the same time, say go along Z axis. And something like that is fine, I guess. Same for this. Let's see how it looks like. Well, we can see before the countdown and I could put no bots. Well, it looks like this. It looks pretty fine, I should say. I like the, those barriers, to be honest. But I probably need to rotate them. Like, what is this? Well, I need to have a closer look to, on, at all of them. Well, I will rotate them a bit around uh, the local axis. Probably Y. No? Yes. Because Probably like that is better. I will need to move the barriers a bit below the ground, just in case. So yeah, I would I would need to move all the barriers down a bit, just in case. Actually, I could probably just uh, y utilize the curve to produce the placements for them so that they are lo located alongside the curve, but I mean, it's probably okay. Well, I will unrotate it on local Y. Oops, I shouldn't have, well, I mean, I should have used Alt D, not Shift D. I used Shift D again. Well, 
time to rotate them again. Something like that, yes. I mean, the apex is already kind of slow because uh, of road slowed down. It has slowed down. It kind of doesn't make sense, but well, yes, it's okay. Where else I should put the barriers? Probably here. I mean, I need to do something about Chikwa. Okay, let's just place barriers and then we'll, we'll adjust the angles. Angles, I mean, regarding to the axis. And the placement in on the go. I hope I didn't use shift shift Is it true that if I use shift D it's more dark and if I use Alt T it's not dark? Well Oh wait, it is not proxy. I don't remember when I pressed Shift D and when Alt D. I will just do it from scratch. Oops, what? Ah, well. Well, I guess the main just moves into proxy. <laughs> so amazing. I don't need many barriers, I only need barriers for the parts which are comfortable. surrounding things. <laughs> well, I have to click there. <laughs> well, I mean, it, it serves like a uh, like a hint where the chip lines are, but it's not that much of a secret where the chip lines are because chip lines are, so, are serving as a <laughs> they're serving as a thing to prevent people from cutting, and if they do it finally, if, if they do it fine, then what's the point of not knowing where they are? It, it just gives no advantage. Yeah, the barriers are still below the, the ground. 
I mean, no one will cut here because <laughs> because the draw fold is a curb is already pretty slow, but I need to put them on the both sides of the road to have check lines. I will not even change angle. Maybe I will put some objects somewhere there. I will use the same tire barriers for uniformity and I mean I don't don't intend to make the most diverse tech or that I have my own text. I mean this tag is also mine but it's more like a tutorial. Uh, what did I do? <laughs> Probably I should put a chip in here too. Already twenty eight barriers. This one is like that, and like here, it's okay to move check lines slightly be behind the barriers because no one will go inside the turn inside the barriers and then uh, out of that just to touch the check line. Obviously, I need a check line there too. Let's just continue. Also, we, ha we need to have a name for the track, the music for the track, something like that. Screenshot is obviously done from the track itself. And kinda it's kind of obvious that the barriers should also be put in the place where there is a big elevation change, like here. Okay, let me just at least put them in the correct place. They don't move. This is a bind work. I mean, maybe it can be done with Python, but uh, I can only change properties with it, <laughs> to be honest, for similarly named objects. Okay, I will rotate them all a bit later. I just want to know how it looks like. Did I really do so? I put so many barriers. I hope they're all uh, LTD. Not shifted. Maybe when moving it, I should rotate. When I mean, I can put it in the same place. Wait, uh, wait. Why are they like 
What the hell? Yes, what? <sighs> okay, I need to do it from scratch. Okay, do that 30 more times. Then rotate them all. I mean, okay, more of us. I just spent too much time. Probably it's also a tutorial of the fact that something goes really in a long way, even though it's simple. <laughs> I'm just doing GZ and uh, least it's good if it's in a place you can see. And I also need to rotate all of them around the local y axis. Well, there are barriers, which is good. They are not rotated, this is bad. I am pushed, which is also bad. Well, it's kind of okay. Clearly, there should be barriers here. Should be fixed. Well, maybe uh, the bottom of the lake is kind of too <laughs> too much at the bottom. <laughs> I 
There should be barriers here. I mean, usually I made some own made barriers, which were kind of bad, like these ones. But they had sponsors. You should check if it's proxy or not main, because sometimes uh, the main pops up. Obviously, I need a barrier here. They seem like hexagonal, but they're not. <laughs> it's only an illusion. Well, probably it's fine. The check line can be put. I don't think uh, someone will skip. I mean, okay, we also have check lines here. I could put something like an arc of stone, but it's a bit difficult for me. I don't know, probably I should uh, continue those those barriers up, up until here because it makes sense Well, and here you can cut if you want, I guess. <laughs> no, I will not do that. I mean, let it be. Ah. Oh. 
Yeah, no, obviously the client is touching this back here. And then I will put barriers here at the top. I think they're on top right, yes. some point it seems to it just seems to me that it's not top it's not top orthographic but apparently it is it's a strange feeling okay obviously they well, they will have some tilt too well here it's just the wall, which will be responsible for check line. Here it's the bank anyway. I mean the the rubbles. I don't think it's really possible to do something. I mean you can cut probably here but then I will just put a wall. Maybe like that. I kinda need some trees, but they are easy to port. But I want something dynamic in the, the truck. Like some rolling balls somewhere, <laughs> I don't know. Just to showcase that you can also do animation, I guess. Well, I need to fix barriers. Probably I would like to put some barriers here too. Where is the pipeline starting here? Okay. Here I guess we also can put something like like the arc. There are plenty of arcs. The start. Okay. I will put barriers directly on the off road because it's off road. I guess. The graphic view is strange, of course. Mm. 
Well, let's go here. I didn't mean that. Okay, let's just. Oh, this is fine. This is also fine. This is fine. This is fine. No. What about this? I ah, I already rotated it, I guess. Eight forty one. Okay. I think from the Z point of view, Z axis, it's not so good either. <laughs> I mean, but okay. Maybe it's okay like that. Like it makes no sense because they're still floating in the air. Okay, I fixed two turns. Well, this thing is fine. I think this thing is also fine. I mean, I put them a bit below. Putting a bit below seems fine. This is not fine, but at least there are barriers. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> obviously, on the top, at the top of barriers, there should be a visible wall in some place. Let's continue rotating them. This is twenty-five. Okay.
Well, and here the problem is... It's okay, but... It's... Oh, well... It's still floating there. Maybe for these ones I will need to move them down by much more. I'm not sure. Not just 10 centimeters. I don't know. In Blender it seems like very bad. And then suddenly in the game it seems good. <laughs> don't ask me how it happens. I have no idea. No. Yeah, I don't really have an idea how to rotate them. Ah, maybe because of that. Wow, it's already blue. Now I need to do it to this. <sighs> Pretty tiny drop. I mean, I could put other objects, but I don't know which fit. Oh, this. So many barriers yet to go. Yet to go. Well, this seems even fine. Don't even rotate. This is probably okay. This is probably okay too. I don't know. Okay. 
Okay, I need to do not much, but probably I need to <laughs> put those things down. It's okay, it's okay. This is too much, okay. decided to do it. Easy tag. Mm -hmm. Okay, I need to move a bit below this. So handle everything here. I'll export just to see that everything is fine. It should be fine. This seems kind of strange. At the same time, it's probably okay. Well, this is not moved down. This is. It seems like okay, especially from below. Yeah, go ahead. Looking at it in Blender, looking at it in Blender is not very motivating because you see how much work you still have to do. But in here it's kind of motivating. that using my own vision. <laughs> I already rotated them. What Seems fine anyway. It just seems like for me, like uh, there. Oh. Okay.
by Duratate around local Z if it's like the same. <laughs> I also need to change this. What did I already? No, I didn't. Well, okay. I completed this issue. Now I need to do this engine. It's not like very much. Seems like I should rotate this. Like this. Ah, ah, ah. What? So that it's more. Look, it's looking like the neighbors. Like just in case you manage to. We passed it somehow. <laughs> I don't think you can, but just in case. By the way, this should be like what is this? Give me my sculpt and don't really mind but okay uh, maybe I need to put them even below the annotations are annoying No, really, you are annoying. Who the hell decided to write, write that? Points with finger at myself. Well, they're okay here. They're okay there. Oh wow.
I think it should be rotated along x axis too. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> this is looking so funny. <laughs> Well, it's probably okay. Oh, there are no barriers here, only here. I like it very much. Is it really so? Oh, okay. Should be the same, right? But it's not. Okay. Straight. I mean, is this really floating the space? Well, no. I think I have some suspicion that this and this and this should be rotated. along the x-axis Well, let's pretend it's fine, because it seems to be fine. <laughs> Check lines are kind of disturbing the vision, to be honest. But it's like that always. Nothing new, I should say. Yeah, I should probably put an invisible wall here. Like, it's still possible to jump, I guess. Like, yeah, what is this? Obviously you skip check lines, but... It's better to not skip them, I guess. I forgot to check if check lines are okay. I mean, the, the barriers. And they are okay, apparently. Even here. Oh, no. They're not standing. They're not hanging in the in the air, which is good. Well, I need to make this stone slightly less sharp. Like This should be smoothened for sure. Oh, 
Well, it's pretty good already. Now let's trust the chocolates. I made it a rectangle, so... It should be fine. Now I delete this. And I will make this point somewhere here. Well, probably I need still to move it out a bit. Okay. That was the first check line, zeroth. That's how the rectangle will look like. I will move it down. Apparently it was hide on the road. I don't think someone will fly <laughs> here. This is probably fine. Almost certainly the fastest way from here to here is by the road and from here to here is by the road too. Seven and eight. I'll just make it seven. Okay. Hope you like that as well. Except uh, there is a problem because uh, this, uh, the previous check line, this check line, are kind of out of barriers. It might be possible just to go here than here. Obviously, I need to do something about that. Oops, what did I do? Okay, I did nothing. Same goes for the next check line, by the way.
again from here it's a bit easy to go here so I will block something I mean it's easy to go to go there but no one will ever do that because it's very slow <laughs> but just in case I will just put it in Next check line is somewhere here. But again, technically you can bypass it somehow. Like going from here to here, but okay. Let's just Well, I need the lower bo lower bound of the Rectangle to be below the road, yes. Probably like this is also okay. This seems fine. But also, together with this check line, I need to put an invisible wall here and there too, but okay, maybe a bit later. Well, I need double check now. A double check. something like that. Well, the problem is the road is tilted. So I need to well, let's just make it like that. Then I will raise those things up. Something like that. Now I can do something like this. I mean, it's still bad. Happily, they don't have to be parallel or something. I mean, if it's if I'm. Extrudent up 
but not uh, parallel to normal of this check line. I guess it's uh, showing the side for me, but that's okay. Something like that. It's probably okay. But I will put another check line anyway. Oh wow. 45 meters. Oh wow. Probably like that is bad. Let's test it. Well, the first check line is starting in the bay and finishing the bay. Pretty nice. Second one also starts in the bay. Can we technically fit here? Guess no. Guess what? Because the hitboxes of the barriers are boxes. Well, technically, maybe someone can fit here, but what's the point of that? This should be fine too, and this should be fine. Guess. There should be an invisible wall anyway. Well, uh, maybe I should duplicate this. <laughs> I think it could be okay. Well, just in case someone decides to cut here. Uh, maybe I should make a triple check line. <laughs> anyway, why that does it? Does it say like they're not parallel at all? Like what the hell? Maybe I should uh, like take them another way. Ah, well, I understood it. Well, I don't think it's possible to really do something bad. Okay, let's add invisible balls. Invisible ball is, is the same thing, but it should have invisible texture, I guess. Let's just add it somewhere. Well, it's not a library object. Well, it should be somewhere like here. Invisible walls in general are evil. Because like 
Some people use invisible walls to limit the card from going anywhere, while it do doesn't even have any sense. But here, invisible walls just invisible wall just prevents uh, will just prevent uh, jumping over the barrier, which uh, usually shouldn't do anything bad. Good, but uh, here a person can just skip a chip line accidentally. So I will just make a 20 meter wall. Where is the chip line actually? It's is it like here? The check line and the invisible wall kind of intersect, but it's okay. Well, I need an invisible texture for that. Let's open Inkscape and to make it. I mean, you don't have an, you don't need to have an Inkscape. You can do it with Keep too. Let's just create something of size 256 to 56, which is to the power to the power of 8. Create a new layer, which will be transparent. Update the background and voila. We have SDK sets. No, oh, I mean it's in the SDK meter app anyway. I will also add some random number just in case. It's not like you should do that, but generally, I, uh, I, I mean, I'm, I'm doing that so that if I accidentally happen to merge all my tags, mm, I wouldn't like the names of textures to intersect. So, for example, if you are making your tag, you can uh, append uh, its short name or project short name, which doesn't have to be the final name, to the front of texture name, like I could do simple track transparent visible wall, so that they, uh, the names don't intersect and for example if you want, would like ever to do a mashup then they don't intersect and they don't intersect with other text too. This is just a transparent texture. Let's also copy it from here to here. Like. Let's just use it. Backface column, sure. Well, it's oriented the wrong way, I guess. It should be oriented like this. I mean, it doesn't really matter. Blend mode, uh, I'll select alpha blend so that. Oh no, blend is cushion. Well, rather alpha cushion. I didn't know. Let it be just black anyway. And we should select uh, probably cut out transparency alpha test because it's exactly the shader that uh, is needed for the textures which have some areas completely transparent and some areas completely not transparent. And this texture is transparent. Well, and it should also reset card and drive and collision action reset.
and I also need another invisible wall. Well, let's just make sure that this invisible wall is low enough. Well, it's low enough. The same thing, but we rotate it. Something like that. Maybe it shouldn't be invisible at all, but uh, it should be subdivided. Okay, and then we can make these things go here. These things go here, so that it really touches uh, is. The same place as Bayes. I will make sure it's in the right place. Well, it's kind of here, it should be enough. I mean, if you uh, if you accidentally jump over the barrier near, near the toe, it's okay, you will be just rescued. If you try to cut the toe very much, it's kinda your fault. <laughs> but okay, at the same time I can... do something like this, continue the wall. So that accidentally no one does it. Let's just take this and this and use local. Well, it seems like it covers something completely, which is great. I think uh, here there should be also an invisible wall, like just in case someone tries to cut. Maybe not so big. Like if you try to cut very very much, you you pay with chip line. <laughs> if you don't, you don't pay. You are just rescued. I think just in case I should also like visible wall here. Like just in case. I mean I highly highly doubt it. I don't like invisible wall, visible wall so much cool. <laughs> I will just do the sticky track editor 
mod and uh, we'll just put all objects from the media repo library that I can see. I did something wrong. <laughs> Why are they not one over another? I mean, there is a space between them. I don't think someone can know there, but okay. Let's try to rescue. Let's try to cut very much. Like, if you cut very much, you get. If you try to cut, you get. Uh, if you. Ah, great. If you cut a bit, you hit the bell. If you cut, try to cut a bit more, you hit invisible wall. Otherwise, you miss a chicken. Like if you are, if you have the audacity to cut so much, yes, something like this. Oh, yes. I mean, yes. You can just use the like itself to try to cut, but apparently not. You can try to go here, <laughs> but well. Not today. Well, you can... You can try to cut like this, but then you are rescued. Because if you notice, the invisible wall goes up to... up to here. It's not really visible, but... Maybe I should extend it. Let me extend it. Let me extend it here. Like, okay, let it be like this. And like this. So now, if you try to cut the check line, maybe it's fine like this. Yeah. If you try to cut the check line, you still need to go right. <laughs> yeah, like this. And I mean, there is another chicken on here. Now let's just... Uh, well, it will be visible also done. <laughs> let's just... Uh, do something about library objects. Let's put some library objects. Some other library objects. Street furniture. See them find speed trap and blah blah blah. There should be a gate. Just like the fence, not barrier, blah 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 blah. Probably not here. What is red Tony Porto? Tori. I forgot what it is. Ah, it's for jungle. Probably buildings. Balcony barrier, 
Chimney, Igloo, Mountain House, Mountain House, and Silver House, Silver Kills, Mountain I don't want any buildings. It's it's that's this is supposed to be the track with the uh, like nothing around it. Maybe it's flex. I don't know. Maybe I should. Well, I should uh, take some trees. I don't remember which trees I made for a slow ring. I mean, I considered many trees, and some of them I didn't use. Low pine tree was used. Autumn. Well, autumn is probably, is probably not what I want. I want some big tree. Maybe palm trees, okay? But I'm afraid it's low poly. Anyway, let's make a box. What? Why I cannot make a box? Ah, I need to click on it. Mm -hmm. Let's just snap it to something. I will just rotate them by random angles. Random as in I will roll something. <laughs> Let's make it more palm trees. <laughs> Maybe except just start it I have no idea how it looks like. I hope uh, they are at least uh, <laughs> visible. <laughs> or then, or otherwise, I will delete them. <laughs> okay, we have many palm trees and the them. Well, we have them. There is only one problem they are too high. And they are probably visible from all of the other track. <laughs> okay, from here they are not visible. And okay, they are. <laughs> Maybe the text that's actually good. <laughs> like the track is very small. But I think no. I think I will resize them anyway. And they have different colors because colorization works like that. Very great. Let me just slide them up. Oh. What do you mean they have 5 meters? Right. Seriously, what do you mean? Ah, that is 30, okay. 
five meters is on the length. Okay, let's just use individual oranges and the uh, S05. Okay, now they're not 30 but only 15 meters high, which is probably. <laughs> So we planted a few palms, a few is like 30, well they still look high compared to the player. It's probably ok. Honestly I never thought I would make a track with sand, like this sand texture is so boring to me. Almost as boring as Dan Paradiso and uh, <laughs> and the Scar Car Car GP uh, Og for this music for almost all things. Well, you can make many mistakes and go further than afford. I think uh, it's a great tech, even though it's almost empty. But I mean, it has. It already has stays. Wow. Maybe this kind of text is what SDK needs, not something. Not something completely new as I do. Wow, like. It's already not in the middle of nowhere. But alright. I can plant a few more palms. I don't know why, like this is the coast. <laughs> I also need to add zippers. Snap them to the face. Very many bounties, already thirty six. I need to do to add something else. To be honest. I don't want to add many things. Pine tree, I mean, pine trees are for cold weather. Everything is ok, but. Uh, I don't know. Maybe topical plant. What is topical plant anyway? I don't remember what is it. Wow, well, 99. Topical plant is... Uh, I don't know. Okay, let's make box anyway. And just put it in the, into the water and scale by two <laughs> and look. <laughs> I think it's something that can be put into water. Ah, uh, no, it's just a thing. Okay, I mean, I can put them. Somewhere like here, okay. 
so that they're kind of visible, but also kind of not visible. I don't know. Like this. I mean, I already <laughs> resized it by two. <laughs> Maybe I should put them here. I mean, outside of the track it's supposed to be nothing in, the, in which nothing can go. <laughs> I'm afraid it will lag some, somehow. Okay, but I want to add something else. Not just nature. I mean, animal pig. <laughs> oh, jungle TA. It's probably what I need. It's 33 meters, clearly I will do something like that. <laughs> they should go somewhere like here, at the south. Ah, why do I press that? <laughs> I think it should be really big. I don't remember how. Yeah. I think it's very big. Let them go somewhere here. Near the invisible walls. <laughs> In the invisible walls, to be completely precise. Maybe enough taste, <laughs> but I cannot stop. I hope they're okay anyway. Lamponi, no, 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 I don't want to explore really much the repo because I want to also to put items and make zippers. Maybe an additional dive line. Additional dive line is basically looking exactly like the main driver, but without that antenna, well, with antennas, I mean, it looks exactly like that, in fact. <laughs> Skybeam, Mermaid, Bugler, I don't know. Where could be the gate for starting state furniture? Blue, neon, air, box, gate, winch, power, giant, plastic bag. Luggage, 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 orange, hook, to pencil, paint, orange, hook, to pencil, paint, proceed, orange, belt, to that. X must light. Where could even be the gate for the start? I remember there was. Piranha. Maybe electrical fence gate? But I mean, it's gate. And it's electrical. <laughs> ah, yes, it's gate. <laughs> it's not for welcoming participants. I remember there was one. 
log by luggage mailbox which car vehicles no not vehicles what I don't think the gate is in, in the folder nature. Maybe water lily. Okay, let's add water lily just for the sake of something being in the water. I don't know. Where is the gate? Low point. Maps. Interesting. Rocket blast. Oh. Wilbert. I think it was here. No. New status. I remember there was a gate for starting. I mean, okay, I wanted to add some more. Okay, so um, I wanted to add the gate that looks like uh, this over the starting line. I remember there, there is a model, but I don't remember where it is. <laughs> but anyway, it's the library. So, well, what I wanted to do is let's clone another pulp. What I wanted to do is uh, show how additional timelines let diamonds look. Well, the main timeline is something like this. Bad tone. Driveline consists of quads. I mean, they can go anywhere, but they should be chained. Well, and at the start, at the start, uh, we just remove those two edges and add two antennas. An additional timeline looks exactly like that, but a bit differently. Its finish also looks like this, but it starts with this thing. Well, basically, also antennas, but uh, here this quad. This is a quad. This is a quadrilateral, which is in the driveway, but is not visible in it. And here, probably, this is a quadrilateral. So basically, they look like that, yes. And uh, you need to put this end of the driveline to the quad of main driveline where you want it to join and uh, this two ends to the quad of dive line where you want it to depart you can attach uh, additional dive lines to additional dive lines you just need to select for them 
not the main timeline, like the type should be timeline edition. And uh, you can make it invisible or ignored by AIs. Actually, those settings are by quad. So you can edit manually the graphics more file and uh, make some certain quad quads invisible instead. And do usable directions. But I will return to main driver. So basically, if you want to, need to make it, it's done like that. I was not gonna. I'm not gonna do it right now. And uh, what I wanted to do is find find the gate, but I didn't find it. <laughs> That's too sad. The track seems like almost uh, flat, but it's not. I wanted to add something. I want to wanted to add items and zippers. What the surface is actually here. Well, and I wanted to make a different button button, like button, but okay, let's start with items. Items are added really easily. You, you just put a 3D cursor somewhere, for example here, and you can shift A. Uh, just the, the same way as you add plane scoop and so on. you can select a sticky and you can select item gift box or banana or white nitro or nitro red flag and blue flag are for CTF particle emitter is for emitting particles it is a bit more complicated because you need to pro provide particle file I will not do it today but it is kind of extensively covered in the guides. Sound emitter is for sounds. You can actually turn in, turn, turn them on and off pretty easily with scripting, but again, not for this talk. Start position for this battle mode. Uh, well, it's a battle mode. Let's add item. Let's rotate it somehow. And let's just move it and uh, make sure it's I will delete that. Let me rename it as item. Rotate it somehow. Uh, to here. 3 point. Three point two. Okay, there will be th three items, I guess. Here. And I also want to, I mean, I could add the night with the same menu, but I guess I can just, uh, why do I, do I do, I, alt D, alt D, if I can do shift, well, when you duplicate, there is a menu like for moving, so like you can add the numbers and select axis, I will move along local axis by 3.2 and again uh, th 3.2 and for this 3.2 with minus but I will try to change them to nitros I mean I can't do it nitros small And this is also this will also be a small nitro. I think changing type here works. So like you can use time and get nitro. You can get an item box. Let's make it a, a small nitro. So you can choose nitro, but why? if you can choose other item, let's let's see if choosing the type. It object properties box, it should work. And also let's see the other objects. 
well, I put them kind of far away. Well, there are many plots. Pretty cool. There is pretty much nothing here. Many trees. Some of them are kind of standing in the same place. Can I take this knight? Because I can. Do I need to slow down for that? Well, kinda, but I actually went into the stone part. part. I mean, the fault should slow down me. Well, it slow downs a bit. Well, it's probably okay. 3.2, 3.2, okay. <laughs> well, but Knight also displayed as cubes, yes. <laughs> well, probably I will just duplicate them. Because Knight was I displayed it as triangles and the bananas are displayed as X's and uh, it's not understandable where they point to. <laughs> I also put that pretty far from the start because the starting kit will be around here. By the way, if I use bots, how many of them per row can fit? I guess 4 is fine. Let's make it full. I mean, I could change the distance, but I don't want to. Do they fit them? Well, yes, they do. I mean, I'm kind of happy about the yellow texture, it makes me happy by itself, but uh, when it's used in Paradiso, like uh, everywhere, and everything is yellow, it doesn't uh, make me feel glad, <laughs> but here it does, I don't know why, in fact I have no idea, well you can cut here, but is it really bad? Probably I will call it something like sand in the rocks. <laughs> no. <laughs> well, after items, I need to put more items somewhere here. Let it be again five in a row. But if there were two items in the three items, let it be vice versa. I mean, what? I wanted this to be an item. This to be an item. Okay. 
which other items do we need to have? Maybe the same but him. But I mean five and a half is okay, but probably for the state. You can take whatever you want. <laughs> probably I will put something here. Let it be a small item. No. Obviously I will insult an item because it's square. <laughs> but it will be an item. <laughs> Yeah, you can name something exactly as something else, but it will change the name to something point zero zero something. Let's do four point eight. So that the pretty white. Now here let's make some more gifts. Saute them a bit. Actually, let's move them even further. Rotate them a bit again and move them. I want to make it three items in a row and plus three items in a row with one simple reason so that like there is s small time and you cannot use two items you can take two items but first of all you will need to avoid the second item if you like the first item and secondly uh, if you really want to use both, you will need to shoot the first one somehow. Maybe good, maybe good. No one does it anyway. You can avoid them if they are bananas. I also need zippers, and then probably I can upload. Okay, let's put something here. Of course, we'll put a gift box. But With small distance it's probably kind of hard to avoid bananas if there are. Well, let, let me change it to banana. This will be small light. This will be gift. This will be 
small data again. This will be a gift again. I mean, it goes after the chip line. Probably I will. I need to copy this thing. Just in case someone tries to bypass. items like to pin them to the ground I never did this placement last time I made a track I made a great placement of nitrous in, in bananas <laughs> like okay if you go from here and go here you cannot miss chip line you will go to the road anyway but if you go here And if you go in reverse, you go here, but like there is no reason for you to go here and miss check on. Skip it. Probably it's it's good. Okay, I put items nitos, items nitos, nitos, items, items, everything. Let's put a banana here. A gift which is a banana, yes. <laughs> banana. This will be a small item. Just for speedrunners who want small items very much. Like you will get nitos, but it won't cost. Actually, you can like go something like here to take some nitos, but I mean, it's what to go here, I guess. Maybe I should some items so it's like okay you can go for items but you can go for items too well let's do this
Ah well, it renames the previous item into something. Let's test the 40% of items. With bots. Why do you take the night? I took the night. I took the, took the night. No, I didn't. Great usage of double items. I didn't understand. Was it good or bad? <laughs> well, anyway. You can take all the nitros if you don't make mistakes. I make mistakes because I make a mistake. <laughs> I mean, because not as equal to <laughs> making the deck is not a mistake okay I mean we have these items maybe too much it might be not too much Let's continue. the bit items here. Preferably in the top. <laughs> Let it be the feature of the stack, double items. Like, you can make a big gap, but you can make a big comeback sometimes. Here, yeah, I should put a button in the apex again, on the apex. Uh, Very close to things, but I mean, this is banana for sure. This is still an item because I want it like that, not an item. This will be an item. And this will be also an item. And the big item will be here because it's... hard to get it, I guess. But at the same time I will put a banana here. <laughs>
with so many items. Let's put a few more items for spedalios, preferably on the outer side. <laughs> By the way, I forgot for these items to do snap into gold. And also, I will put a double item up here for the same reason. Yeah, you you see that they use local local axes, and they're not parallel at all. And this will be an item. Again, the reason for two items is the same. They can be switched to two bananas. And also, you, you cannot use two anyway. Maybe you will take one on. Okay, maybe let's do something like... But I will put bananas here, like... Like, if you go right, you're a spadrino. If you go left, you're a normal race player. And you will probably get advantage. <laughs> the problem is, like, you need to avoid bananas. Uh, so maybe I will need to put them somewhere in another place, like... Here. No, somewhere like here. Very interesting. <laughs> Switches will be fun on this step. <laughs>
like you can just go straight. And also there are three light or three items. So it just will be very effective. <laughs> Great. I need to put zippers in some wait, something here too. Probably here I just put a banana. Okay, and what? <laughs> okay, I put a banana. You can actually bypass it here, but want it to be loss of time. I want to put it not in the turn but somewhere here. <sighs> Let's put something. This would be an item. Okay. Let's put three of them. Let it be a small motor, and it's also a small motor. This will be an item. And the opposite combination I will put here. In the same combination I will put here. <laughs> Some. And I will put the opus combination here. I'm really lazy to do something like change the offsets again. Let's just rotate and uh, do something like this. Rotate again and do something like this again. <laughs> okay, and this could be an item. This will be an item, small. This will be an item. I also need more bananas. Like the double bananas. If you want to cut too much, probably your place is in bananas. Okay. Probably good. Do I need more items? I think now. Let's look at the items. Okay. These are item, night item, night item, four times in the state. These are three items. These are double rows of items. These are everything with big. Uh, item, 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 and item, banana, item. Items, items. Banana, 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 item, uh, night item, item, big. Four items, two items, two bananas. Item, nitro, item, nitro, item, nitro, vice versa, and this is the same. I don't really want to put nitros here on the outline because you can make a mistake. <laughs> and 
the heels. Okay. okay. Now to now we need to put zippers. Okay, but let's test it first. If no item submission. It doesn't really have ma that many objects. What do you mean 300 kilo trees? What do you mean 700 kilo trees? Well, FPS is kind of fine with bots. Wow, I got the process second item. It's not really hard to get all nitrous, but... Well, I'm confused because everything is... Because the states are not very big, let's say. Oh no, lol. <laughs> oh no. <laughs> okay. items which I could miss. Double items. Plunger and Swatter. Great. <laughs> well, a big nighter, but I hit the wall. Oh no, the bananas. I don't really know how to com complete this stone perfectly. Oh no, there is a banana. <laughs> How about a switch? Where are switches? Well, they're easy to avoid, but I didn't. <laughs> well, they're easy to avoid on the state. Low. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. <laughs> Great job, well done. Wait, why is that an item? Seriously? I urgently need a zipper here. Okay, at least I'm second. Okay, let's see without the bots. If the item's okay. Yes. 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 This is what I planned. Yes. 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 Ah. The the items drop down. Oh no. Yes. <laughs> the second pair of items drop down. Okay. One item is not an item. Yes, yes. Yes. I should put one more banana anyway. Okay. This is for some reason an item. It should be an item. Yes. This is an item already. Okay. This guys decided to fall through. And I need one more banana. From here. To here. It's not like there is somewhere to put it. Can I just use sculpt mode for things like that? Like, what the hell is this vertex?
okay let's see what does well maybe I should rotate it and also One more. Well, if you manage to do it exactly here, but I think uh, the people who go here will go top down there and lose time. Mm, maybe it's okay like that. Anyway, I think I will. I need to add zippers only. And that will be fine. And screenshot and license. Why so many point so so many trees? Okay. Two items. Very nice. The items are not topped. Okay, nice. Okay, let's do a zip. We could take the normal zipper from the media repo, but just for information, I will show how to do the textures with gloss maps. Well, I mean. Okay, let's do it. Let's open the Inkscape. I prefer to have a vector graphics editor to rasterize, like GIMP. I use GIMP too, because I will change display units to pixels. Save it as... Uh, I don't know. Source SVG. And I will make a zipper texture. Without any border. Let it be 256 to 56. And I will press Ctrl Shift R to resize the page to it. The texture will be transparent. But uh, there should be an arrow. Let's do some kind of arrow. Angle of 30 degrees, something. Some stroke. Mm, let's do the same, but we will invert the height. And then in a, enable snapping and do this thing. Okay, this is a bad arrow. <laughs> we will also we can also have union. Let's duplicate it and do something like this. And again, do a union. Unite these two, like, like in Blender. Yes. Uh, Why I cannot do anything here? I don't see the icons to be honest. Well, it is strange. Well, <laughs> the arrow failed. Let's make another one. <laughs> <laughs> 
Let's make a parallelogram. It doesn't matter what is the other angle. I will just make that make it like that. Okay. Copy it. Flip vertically. And do this. Oh okay, let's unite them. Let's make another one. Shift it by something. And then subtract. Okay, we got some kind of arrow. Let's scale it to two, five, six. No, not like that. Okay. I will not use the texture. Well, of all, it is four pixels more than needed, so I will move it by minus one. This by minus two. This by minus three. This by minus four. <laughs> will be five arrow zipper. And also, this will be yellow. This will be orange. We can change the color here too. Let zip a bit like that. While this is the background, it could be anything, but it will be transparent. Okay. Let's do something. <laughs> let's do a gloss map. And let's do an. Well, I will not do a normal map, even though I can. Well, actually, why not doing a normal map? <laughs> well, for that I would need GIM, probably. I mean, with Vector Editor I did something that is cool. Let's do a gloss map too. Let's just add 300. Make something black. So, so now those arrows are all the same. I will just make them one single color. And now um, we can open the materials and see this thing. Gloss map is made for things like shininess, roughness, met metalness, and glow. I think they should glow only a little bit, so I will put it like. 30, 40. Mm. I think they should be kind of metal, metalness. They should be metallic, kind of, and uh, about shiny. Yeah, rather shiny, but too big values of red are usually bad. Let, let's make them like that. This will be a gloss map. Let's export them. The selection is... Simple tag arrow. And we will ex export this as... Arrow gloss. Happily, it, uh, it textures with some transparency, like PBR, uh, you can use PBR cut-on transparency shader, so it's fine. Now let's open GIMP. And also, let's make this, but prepare for making a normal map. I would like each arrow to have something like, I don't know, pixels, 
which will be of different height. So let's do it for this arrow. I mean, let's just split it into Let's just use the triangle of uh, height 32. Let's just duplicate it at 64, duplicate at 64, duplicate at 64. Well, 64 is too much. Maybe I should set it. 216, yeah, plus 32, plus 64, plus 128, okay, now I will do this thing, I will unite them somehow, union, And the same thing, but plus 32, uh, minus 16, okay. <laughs> okay, I will take these things away for now. And, uh, I mean, this is a rectangle which is skewed. I would like to take the midpoint of this and midpoint of this. Like, okay, let's just make something. Well, the midpoint is at this way. So basically, I can also do this. Thing. I want, like, I want to make some kind of chessboard. Like, I want to intersect all these things, and uh, intersect them with this, and color it differently. And then it will be, there will be those pixels for normal map, so that it's not only a zipper, but also some, some kind of chessboard. Check out flag, let's see. <laughs> let's just do it separately. I will just intersect all those things plus th 300 more now here I will delete pink and here I will delete orange I will intersect those things they are like one object those things those things those things okay minus 600 minus 300 now we will overtake each of them with the arrow itself Well, we did it. Now I will just uh, do minus 300. And it's the same arrow. 
but like this. Let's do it like I don't know yellow, green, blue. Those I would like to copy it here. Copy it here. Copy it here. And copy it here. Copied something like oh well what anyway <laughs> and now I will normal map this I will copy it and now paste in GIMP now for that I will apply normal map great. Like, yeah. Uh, well, maybe I should apply a bigger scale, but I think no. I mean, let's say 7 is fine. And I will export it as. Uh, normal. G glow normals. Normal map. I will not save it, but I will not close it because maybe I need to change it. Anyway, let's make a zip. Play. PBL solid, normal map is this, and the uh, gloss map is this, and also the texture is this. Oh, actually, cut out transparency. Wait, what? I cannot do a normal map? Like what? Cannot do a normal map for that. Well, it's not like I really need it. Yeah, note that in the offload there will be no zipper. Let's put two zippers. Well, it will be zipper. Zipper duration. Maybe let's increase the zipper duration to like 5 seconds, which is the duration default zipper to. Increase it somehow a bit. Right before these items, right after these items.
okay maybe something like that I raise the zipper by 0, 0,03 meters. Hopefully, it works. <laughs> it's a long zip. There will be no, no normal map because it's transparent. Oh, I didn't copy it. Oh no, it's too much speed. Well, if the lap time is like 30 seconds, maybe I should make it for laps. I don't know. Oh no, a banana. Well, let me move the text anyway. Well, normal map may be useful. Let me try follow-ups. It seems like this stack doesn't have any states because like those small states are literally tilts. <laughs> but on the minimap uh, they are really tilts, not states. The only state is very big, and uh, everywhere else you need to do something with steering. 36 seconds, very interesting. So like 1 minute 10 for 2 laps. Oh no. Note that I didn't even take nitros, and uh, I'm still kinda fast. Okay, I'm not fast. I feel fast. I don't know why. I cannot take items soon. Yeah, you don't take the I, the, the zipper on the off road, and that's intentional. This is kind of bump. I cannot even focus. <laughs> Those dub double items are supposed to be taken in both. Like like both, but I take none. <laughs> Those stones are supposed to be like very heavy. Very heavily turned, but they're not. 146, oh no, what have I done? some monkeys but I don't want to. It was supposed to be in the middle of nowhere and it's not <laughs> already oh no <laughs> like I expect the straight before the chicanes to be a bit longer. Well I think two two twenty is a good time. Let me make it for laps. The zipper is... Oh, I need to add sun. Well, actually I have sun. It looks like, like a Spanish flag because orange becomes yellow. Because everything is metallic. I need to add sun. The sun is added very simply. You pick a place. You pick... you put light sun. You don't need anything of that of Blender uh, options, you need to open object properties Sun for shadows 
yes ambient color should be something you should fill all of those it actually says somewhere what should be lighter than what diffuse should be darker than specular and ambient should be darker than everything ok, ambient this let's just leave it as standard 150, 150, 150 and I mean you can choose this exactly in this point of menu the color picker is very strange but ok let's make it slightly more yellow add 205, 205 very slightly more yellow and put it somewhere like at like 10 meters like I don't know The cursor is at minus 9.5 and the sun is where is the sun? at 10 meters. What is this point below? Maybe it should be at well the elevation change is 25, maybe it should be at 40 meters. And in the same place as sun I will add also another sun, which should be light shaft god rays emitter which will emit some something <laughs> let's say it shouldn't be very big let's say it should be a bit yellow <laughs> Oh no, it's too dark. But I mean... Oh, it is too, too much, I think. Well, I have texture compression, so... It looks like a bit of morning. <laughs> well, light shaft is too big. And the sun should be... I don't know. Let's go a bit more radical. Okay. Well, it's still not so bright. Well, just think that, oh, oh wow, it's still too much. Without library objects, it would be boring empty tag, almost. Oh, I forgot to do uh, the bottom of the what? Okay, light shaft is maybe too light. Yeah, it's very metallic, I like it. shaft should be like, I don't know, pretty yellow. And sun... <laughs> Maybe it will be too bright. I'm not even sure. Can we disable texture compression? Let me try to start this TK. I hope it doesn't crash. <laughs> Check debug is probably not needed. By the way, about timelines, 
you should make the drive line as wide as your track is and because if there is some possibility that a person can complete the lap while touching check lines but not hitting the drive lines he can hit all check lines but one and then rescue and the lap will be counted well it didn't cash I guess right? did it? ok well it's too light right now <laughs> Maybe it's fine, but for me it's too light. The yellow is not yellow, it's more like white. <laughs> Zipper and burn bolt to hit yourself. Mm, I mean, okay, let's do it. Light shaft should be like, I don't know, 003. <laughs> Why with sun it was more yellow? Without sun, I mean. Well, it's still fine, but it feels like a bit dark. stage maybe it's fine what if I disable this sun when I disable the sun apparently nothing changed I mean, maybe the color for the sun should be a bit more yellow. Then it's more warm. Okay, maybe I, I won't need it anymore. Okay, I see the light shop now. It's kind of too white. should change uh, the water at uh, the bottom of the lake to something or maybe water should have something like more opacity <laughs> I mean Does the water has enough capacity? Well, uh, I don't think so. Maybe I should, in addition to water surface, I need, I will add the same thing, but shifted by minus two, that, and it will have another material. It 
will be like like bo like bottom, but it's actually not. I will use some texture. What the rock A is what? Well, maybe this. Well, in fact, uh, the lake will be only two meters long, uh, deep, but... <laughs> Fall in effect. <laughs> and the shallow water you can dive? No, I cannot dive here. What the bottom also? And uh, for this material, what the surface? Let's do it like that. Interesting. If it it will if it works even. Uh, does water even move? Maybe I should do it not by two but minus five more. Minus eight. Let's just texture it normally. maybe 10 I don't know well it's not the texture I need I need something for the bottom of the lake. I don't know. Maybe I want it to be a mud. <laughs> Low. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> I'm not sure. Then maybe. So basically, I'm just unlocking the texture. And also I need to take I need to unlock this of course well actually too bad that uh, the road and the off road kind of prevent uh, the rock parts from being connected but there is a the way to do it let's just uh, select the road and the off road and duplicate those vertices and uh, make them go somewhere like 3 kilometers ok ok, now select them again Now deselect those. Control I select everything, Control I back. And now let's pretend they are from stone. 
And now let's unwrap this stone. And now uh, both parts of stone are connected. Now we can, they're like very connected, we can scale them by 50 maybe. Maybe we, we can rotate them. Eh, eh, what? We can rotate them a bit. Now we will do a trick. We will select edge loops. Again. And we will do one plus control plus control plus control plus. We selected what we had for hold and off hold, and we will just delete only faces. And now this thing goes minus three kilometers, and we just remove doubles. Well, remove doubles is minus 7k vertices, but the stone is fine. You can see that the stone re texture repeats itself. Actually, we can try removing even more, just in case. Well, nothing more to remove. It's fine. And if we select something this, something here, we can just select everything, which is great. I'm not pressing it anymore, <laughs> by the way. Well, now it's all textured. That's excellent. Maybe the mud is okay. <laughs> I'm not sure, but just in case. What? What is this texture? <laughs> well, and this texture happens if uh, if the coordinates of UV unwrapping are too big. That is also a bug. Well, I don't know if mud works. The problem is, let's just move them to less strange coordinates. And here there. Oops. The problem is, uh, like, we cannot even view them. <laughs> because there are too many faces, probably. I'm not sure. Maybe if I go here, and then I select everything. Oh wow, yes, I can view it. It's important that the UV coordinates are not so big, otherwise something is really bad. Mm, but I mean we can even increase it. Let's do it. Wait, where is the center? I don't really think mud works. <laughs> Not the carrot. Maybe that goes. Actually, 
Which Oleg have no idea. Maybe Gus Cliff? No. Gus Alf. <laughs> what do you mean? I don't like it. Instead of that. Let's start again. Okay, what the hell is this? It exported badly again. Oh, but was guys okay. Uh maybe it was Let's take in. We can select it here for some reason. I mean, okay, we, I cannot zoom it. Cannot you just like. I get it, you cannot show me, but... I don't understand why, when I scaled it, it went somewhere else. I already scaled it, doesn't want to scale even more. But it's yellow, yes. Maybe some zero zero one can be something else. I don't understand why, why it scales around something strange. Bounded box center is what? Let's do three. Seems like okay. Maybe I scaled too much. Maybe the gas shouldn't be red. Wait, what? The water should risk. A collision action goes uh, is rescued. Maybe should be gas C. Yeah, probably. Maybe it's too repetitive, maybe it's not. Let's take it. Well, dog is dog.
far, in the far away, it seems really repetitive, to be honest. Yeah. This thing see, doesn't seem fine because, like, okay, the water seems fine, but why does water not rescue me? The water should ask him, but it doesn't. Yeah, actually, probably we have the shade somehow. Somewhere. Shader can be set to displace, and probably I will just select it. Vegetation is vegetation, though. Maybe I need to set it manually. But I mean, okay. <laughs> Again to this. Probably I should take those things. Plus plus. Plus. And those would have less repetition. Like, okay, let's just unselect some, what is this, this one's, okay, maybe like this. And the rest we will just scale a bit, so that the repetition is Slightly less. Maybe like this. I don't know how to make it make less repetitive. Maybe something like this. Uh, what, what, what is? What? Zero point four. I have no idea. It doesn't solve the problem because these things are kind of repetitive. Maybe it's okay though, I don't know. Yeah, I also need music somehow. 
but I guess I had something in mind. Maybe it's fine. Well, you need some music. If you need some music, you go to one to a site, for example, Open Game Out. Well, you search for music. I don't know. <laughs> You select the license you need. I will select CC0 and CC by 4. I want music. I don't know. Actually, I know some music which I would like to put in one of my tags. Of course, if the music hasn't occurred in any of previous sticky tags, it's better. Well, there are too many things. I don't remember how... Uh, what is the name of the thing I want to put? Probably it's called... this I'm not sure if it's It's because like I wanted a track that is sunny and shiny. It's not really shiny, but anyway, I downloaded it and now I will make a music file. Yes, please make the mu name the your music file something different, because if two addons have the same music file name, even if the sound is different, one of them will override the other and no one wants it. Let's take the link. Just in case I put the license again. I just copied it from Possible Revealing. License is CCDU. Actually, Mintadoc is the one who made the music for this promo. His music was used in this poem. Game is how much more loud it is it will play.
Was a mountain by me to do, right? right. This is your was a mountain, yes. Okay. Now I need to write promo music here. And also I need to copy that from here. Okay, I will. Uh, I'm not sure if I ex expo exported it. Oh no, Blender crashed. Oh, Blender is somewhere here. <laughs> it sometimes crashes when you feel some fields. Hope it didn't know. Oh no. <laughs> Export it and then, well, let's enable music. Reset the game to take changes. Let's restart the game again. Thank you. 
Okay, but well, I need to test it without video recording just to check my F if my FPS is okay. Uh, I guess if yes, I will just uh, add motifs, but I will do it with video and upload it to the server for test uh, online and then upload it to add-ons well. well, apparently it gives slightly less FPS than RT4 so maybe it's fine but I'm really concerned about uh, all those repetitiveness and the uh, lack of texture so probably I will just add a material called snowy something <laughs> I don't know and there should be like rock snow what is rock snow? I will apply it to no, something like here. Oops. Maybe I will apply it to uh, uh, to see where it's located maybe it's too much well maybe not too much mm. they're not really visible let's say there they're visible but The sun is not really yellow. I mean, I can feel it. Feel it. But something else could be filled too. <laughs> I don't know, something like... By the way, are there some are there any vertices or uh, like faces which have more than four sides? No? Oh there are none. Wait. I don't know, I guess I can split all those to trees. I mean, I want this to be snow rock. Actually, this can also be split. Maybe like this. Mm -hmm. Oh no. I mean, 
here. I would like to see snow too. And let's make snow less repetitive. Divide by 10 and rotate by 90 degrees. Will that be fine? Let's do it. Looks kind of bad though, except uh, no. some edges are strange. <laughs> ah. Is this in? Anyway, let's just make it as good as possible. I don't know, I don't want to retexture the stony thing again. Maybe I can just move it somehow. Nah, it's bad. Maybe like that is better. And if what I can just... Yeah, it looks much better, I would say. Like snowy rock. You don't even need any textures in between, I guess. Maybe you need, but I mean, I'm kind of okay like that. <laughs> well, then I need a screenshot. <laughs> For the screenshot, I obviously need graphic six. I don't have a name for the tag. Why is it so white? Maybe like this is fine. I like the place, but 
why couldn't it just be maybe I need to set this color for the sun itself Make it yellow. Mm. Is it yellow? Yeah, it is yellow. Very nice. I mean, I want to include zippers and uh, the trees and the road too. Probably something like that. Maybe somewhere like here. This one is fine. I kind of like it. I kind of like this whole thing. Well, I like the color. I need to set it as a good shot. Let's just take the latest screen shot. The Put it here. And put it also there. Right? Should be like that. However, I should come up with the name. The music is Blossom Mountain. Mountain. And uh, probably the name should be something like that. Nothing is blossom, but... <laughs> My, maybe Palm Mountain? Как бы это в горах? Maybe. Let's do it like that. Note that if you change the folder name, it will just write the next export into another folder. Let's change the group to items. I wonder if I can how oh, well I can specify it. Okay. So I can technically put here something and then change to back to something else. Oh, I knew. 
Let's export. And then uh, note that it's not the same folder. Let's say Palm Mountain. It has 13 files. This has only 6. Music Og. Panga, 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 Panga. That's Panga, Panga, Panga. 7 items. Now it's 13. Too. Like, only name changed. Let's just delete the simple tag zero name. <laughs> Start the game. Because it doesn't have screenshot and stuff. And also I need a license. Uh, I will copy the license from again from Western Brink and just edit it. Palm Coast. I mean, I didn't. I would like to have a more fancy name, but I don't have imagination right now. So it would be Palm Mountain. Well, about the music, I already said something in the license. files like this is music this is mine this is mine this is mine normal map if someone wants normal map here it is <laughs> I will leave some place. 
I guess only music is not by me. Please don't write licenses like uh, uh, who, who read that is dumb because there was a don which had exactly that license. Please be serious. No one wants to delete a uh, don's from SDK for license only. Mm. Except for the following files. Okay, license is done. I will copy it for sure to SDKs and stacks power mode. Good. Now This and this have both 14 items. What? What do you mean? Understand where is the blend? Tag simple, tag simple, tag blend. Ah, here is the blend. Here is the license. Ah, well, it's so it's so sweet. I'm stupid. Yes, I understood. There was a simple tag folder here. And I okay. Okay, graph and materials. License is the same as being what seen. And error, uh, no server, and then simple text can short source SVG. I think so. That's what we need to do. Yes. Okay. Okay. So basically, what I can do is. Compress this folder. And upload it somewhere. Or ask someone to install them. And also considering I don't want to change the bond file. I can just well it was too early to compress because I went to edit the license. I want to make this a single license for both the source and uh, the add-on because I want to open sources too.
Да? No. I can compass it. After I the license. And also I can take the blend from here. And not only the blend. Okay, textures are also there. One, two, three, four, five, six. Is there a screenshot? No? Arrow, arrow, arrow screenshot invisible one. Ah, screenshot is here. It's blend and SVG and license. I can pack separately. Pro mountain sources. I guess it's not. I will switch to my usual SDK client so that it doesn't have well anyway I won't switch to it I can just upload this file to the server and uh, then download from it. Download the, uh, download the server and check on the server how it works. Well, so basically I uploaded the tag to myself and I will open the SDK client which is uh, which is not aware of what I did because it uses different sticks and it doesn't have Palm Mountain used it has many cards basically this track has no scripting no some diff no different everything works and you didn't forget any textures no no the game crashed because it eats too much memory let's disable it then constant I mean, uh, I know about cases when Fabian, for example, made some uh, texture mods. I appreciate them, but uh, for some reason, for me, half of them were shown without solid textures, like half of textures were transparent. Let's just install them. There are usually at least two links, one wow, only 9 megabytes for each track, but I guess it will happen. It will add when I upload the add on because I was lazy to make them. Let's make it.
thing and then per one object you can have one animated texture with which can be made by step continuously and uh, you just set the speed obviously it's a record well it kind of looks like a very full landscape but it's not anyway it looks fine that means can well I have nothing about it in the text set. <laughs> there are some other texts you can notice. Let's just upload it. And of course it decided to look me out. Only I remembered my password. Never use this form if you are updating the distant on. Otherwise you will have ideas like underscore one. Of course music is not mine. I have CC0 and CC by for zero, it's okay. It's accepted. Recognize it. I don't have these things at all. In fact, I was making the another done all this time. What? What? What did I do wrong? I pressed. Re I recognize. Ah, I needed to tick the checkbox. Unacceptable. Oh, mountains. Okay. I have, yes, required. This is you and this is by for you. Yes. Your response was unacceptable. It's acceptable. And acceptable. Can you upload faster? Do you believe it? But I am all moderators. Source archive. Put more sources. I am the sole author of any every file because there is no music. 
course I have. This is you. It, it's not this is you, but anyway. Your response was unacceptable. Pending approval. The greatest minimum ever. I mean, they made a square image, that's why it's somehow. Distorted. It's very optimistic when I'm looking from far away, by the way. It has many objects, I like. Okay, they just set a design out. Build me up. No, I, I don't know how to do it. How it is written. I can check, but why? I wonder if it appears in game. <laughs> Penny by totally toast. Penny with <laughs> Lama. And but to update I need to type this. Click uh, click select uh, search. Then I can update. loading the icon because it's very big. <laughs> I don't think I will put three stars right now. I mean, holy shit, it looks good. <laughs> I'm seriously wondering how they will perceive the track, considering that I wrote some new Blender user. Like, you can search VCS and... Uh, I mean, Blender Damos usually uh, write, uh, is usually writing track by VCS so that uh, he can make a zip for voice chats, like VCS. <laughs> I mean, whoever installs will see that it's actually not by newbie Blender user, but... It's by me. <laughs> Thank you. 
I tried to explain what exactly to do to make your first addon. It doesn't have to be as complex, it doesn't have to be as simple at the same time. It's complex and simple what I did. I tried to explain some basics of Blender and uh, show uh, how to do it in action. Well, and uh, see you next time. I hope you like the tutorial. I hope to, I hope you were not bored. I hope you found something useful. If you use, uh, if you haven't made many tags yet, I should say that I made, I made this track in like slightly more than twelve hours total time without. Uh, exclusion breaks. <laughs> I didn't expect it to be honest, <laughs> but uh, well, <laughs> sounds like maybe his productivity in 2020 when he was posting texts really often. <laughs> I promise I won't do that so much often. <laughs> I don't have so much free time to be honest. Well, see you and uh, have a nice day. Bye.